in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed I will not let you go until you bless me. And I said, what is your name? And he says, Jacob. He said, thou shalt no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, you have power with God and prevail. The Bible says he touched his thigh. And the sun arose and he called the name of the place Peniel. And he says, I have seen God face to face and my life is spared. Give us revelation, O oh God. Let the spirit of revelation through the word, through visions, through encounters, that while you are speaking, O oh God, let your word become images. Let your word become pictures. And let it glue upon our spirit until we become what you are revealing. Ubangi chika isaya na kema masuna ya ubangi chika tonight and let your body be built let your church be edified let your bride be beautified in the name of Jesus Christ God bless you please be seated I want you to be very sensitive to the seasons that were entering in the spirit I believe with all my heart that we're like a woman in travail and God is birthing a lot of things we must be very sensitive don't be careless with your discernment when you come to the house of God like this let your spirit be open the devil will try to distract you with your challenges whatever just throw them away and let your heart be fixed on him in the name of Jesus Christ thank you I just want to say a few things before before we get to the word tonight um, I thought of recent at the faithfulness of God over my life and over this ministry and um, I've had to fight tears because of the overwhelming blessings of God I receive text messages every day our lines are jammed every day people calling from around the world expressing their gratitude for what the Word of God in and through this ministry is doing in their lives the miracles the signs the wonders um, you have to be evil to pretend like the things that are said don't matter the 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 level I mean quite frankly let me tell you sincerely we don't get to hear up to one tenth of the transforming stories that happen in the lives of people what what we receive here on Friday is, is just a token because we are constrained by time and then 
because not everybody who would want to share is available here and um, I really really am touched and then to know how how easy God has made this thing particularly for me I am deeply indebted to him you see let me tell you this when when you honestly sit down and talk with a man of God who fears and loves God he may end up crying because of the pain is a difficult thing to head a ministry to run a ministry to mentor and to teach people there's no guarantee anywhere that they will be changed there is no guarantee that they will even listen to you and so when people give you their attention and commit their lives it's much more than they are liking you there is a grace there is an anointing are we together i am i am very very touched the workers in this ministry who have made my job easy you don't see me running around here to verify what are they doing and i acknowledge i talk with pastors i have colleagues in ministry i have senior colleagues fathers mentors and i know how difficult they will tell you it's easy to preach but the system to make your message heard and understood is very difficult are we together now and i don't want to take lightly and take for granted um, what the Lord is doing in this ministry and through my life and um, I honestly want to appreciate everyone I more so want to acknowledge and appreciate everyone listen carefully and I'm saying this sincerely everyone who is genuinely part of this vision you know I hope you know that no one is obligated to believe in you are you aware of that that there is no yoke on anybody to believe whatever you said god told you it's a difficult thing to be trusted to be believed in enough for people to commit their loyalty and their lives if god is not ashamed to declare his vulnerability to men then no man of god should every time i come down from the car and i see people here despite the weather despite you see some sitting in the grass hanging around there are people inconveniencing themselves right now from around the world listening do they have to do this am i the only man of god and and uh, you know the most touching part of it is when people go out of their way to travel from other cities some of you are seated here now all through the week people have come from within the country from outside the country inconvenience themselves you don't want to know the sacrifice that people make week in week out some of them are men of God too they have their own ego they have their own pedigree and they drop that thing aside to come and sit down to listen to be blessed to be mentored please if God ever gives you influence value it is God helping somebody tonight if God ever makes men to say I will follow you as you follow Christ value it Koinonia a place of encounter with the Holy Spirit and transformation by the principles of God's kingdom
privilege to learn at your feet, for being part of what you are doing around the earth, even at this time, for sensitivity, for your grace and for your mercy. Speak to me, my heart is ready to receive. Lift your voice and pray. Speak to me tonight. You are making men make me too. You are empowering men, empower me also. You are showing men your favor and lifting men mysteriously. Lord, let me be part of that program. You are recruiting a mighty army that will shake the nations of the earth. Would you grant by your spirit that I be a major part of this move of the spirit. You are pruning men. Let my tears not stop you. You are revealing yourself to men. Show me your glory in a new dimension. You are turning lives around. This is the place of encounter. that you are anointing your spirit, the ministry of angels, find expression unrestrained. We thank you. We bless you. Give us encounters. We have not come to waste our time. We have not come to fulfill a ritual. We have not come to listen to a man. We have come like Jacob, to the place where we will see your face. And Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And he said, what is your name? And he says, Jacob. He said, thou shalt no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. 
for as a prince you have power with God and prevail the Bible says he touched his thigh and the sun arose and he called the name of the place Peniel and he says I have seen God face to face and my life is spared give us revelations oh God let the spirit of revelation through the word through visions through encounters that while you are speaking, oh God, let your word become images. Let your word become pictures. And let it glue upon our spirits until we become what you are revealing. travail and God is birthing a lot of things we must be very sensitive don't be careless with your discernment when you come to the house of God like this let your spirit be open the devil will try to distract you with your challenges whatever just throw them away and let your heart be fixed on him in the name of Jesus Christ thank you I just want to say a few things before before we get to the word tonight um, I thought of recent at the faithfulness of God over my life and over this ministry and um, I've had to fight tears because of the overwhelming blessings of God I receive text messages every day, our lines are jammed every day, people calling from around the world, expressing their gratitude for what the word of God in and through this ministry is doing in their lives, the miracles, the signs, the wonders. Um, you have to be evil to pretend like the things that are said don't matter the, the the level I mean quite frankly let me tell you sincerely we don't get to hear up to one-tenth of the transforming stories that happen in the lives of people what what we receive here on Friday is, is just a token because we're constrained by time and then because not everybody who would want to share is available here and um, I really really am touched and then to know how how easy God has made this thing particularly for me I am deeply indebted to him you see let me tell you this when when you honestly sit down and talk with a man of God who fears and loves God he may end up crying because of the pain is a difficult thing to head a ministry, to run a ministry, to mentor and to teach people. There's no guarantee anywhere that they will be changed. There is no guarantee that they will even listen to you. And so when people give you their attention and commit their lives, it's much more than they are liking you. There is a grace. There is an anointing. Are we together? I am, I am very, very touched. The workers in this ministry who have made my job easy you don't see me running around here 
to verify what are they doing and I acknowledge I talk with pastors I have colleagues in ministry I have senior colleagues fathers mentors and I know how difficult they will tell you it's easy to preach but the system to make your message heard and understood is very difficult are we together now and I don't want to take lightly and take for granted um, what the Lord is doing in this ministry and through my life and um, I honestly want to appreciate everyone I more so want to acknowledge and appreciate everyone listen carefully and I'm saying this sincerely everyone who is genuinely part of this vision you know I hope you know that no one is obligated to believe in you are you aware of that that there is no yoke on anybody to believe whatever you said God told you it's a difficult thing to be trusted to be believed in enough for people to commit their loyalty and their lives if God is not ashamed to declare his vulnerability to men then no man of God should every time I come down from the car and I see people here despite the weather despite you see some sitting in the grass hanging around there are people inconveniencing themselves right now from around the world listening do they have to do this am i the only man of god and and uh, you know the most touching part of it is when people go out of their way to travel from other cities some of you are seated here now all through the week people have come from within the country from outside the country inconvenience themselves you don't want to know the sacrifice that people make week in week out some of them are men of God too they have their own ego they have their own pedigree and they drop that thing aside to come and sit down to listen to be blessed to be mentored please if God ever gives you influence value it is God helping somebody tonight if God ever makes men to say I will follow you as you follow Christ value it these are the things that when I see sometimes I'm so moved I'm so touched sometimes you see me just sit there and um, I just say Lord thank you you don't have to do this many men of God do not have the privilege of being loved across all regions usually there is one region that loves you and then another region that persecutes you harshly with a level of hatred that can almost neutralize the love that you have but God has made this different in my life and this ministry there is no region I have gone to that I'm not genuinely loved it's not normal I go to the east and I'm greatly loved I go to the west the south here the middle belt in fact the bible you know the bible says a prophet has is not without honor except in his hometown but the case is very different here i am deeply loved even within this place and i truly 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 value it hallelujah there are very few men of god and i tell you this very few men of god who operate in the level and the dimension of the gift of the spirit and a ministry like this who are not openly persecuted you don't walk in there is a level of the spirit that if you walk above just get set to be in in everybody's negative book you see that but of course not everybody will love you and believe in you but let's be honest let's be honest even those who probably if at all talk against me they don't really hate me some are just ignorant or maybe intimidated or maybe frustrated there are few people who are honestly truly speaking you say i mean i hate this person and i i want us to 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 understand this i want you to know that i value and appreciate everyone i really do you know men of god we are proud people and most times we act as if with or without the members um, we are all right it's not true it's not true it's just a psychological way 
of trying to let the members not take advantage of us but i cannot come here and speak to cheers no matter how anointed i am you are the seal of my apostleship it's 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 it's, it's really thank you thank you very much you truly are it's amazing only god knows but how many battles i would have fought that some of you fought it and won and kept quiet are we together i saw that grace in billy graham the grace that makes a man accepted in every region the only man of god that preached in north korea i saw that same grace in reinhard bonke it was one of the things that took me to joss to passionately i i don't want to carry the truth and have to be explaining to everybody do you know how painful it is to be misunderstood there is a grace there are spirits that are responsible for misunderstanding a man and an anointing did you know something as little as this just this someone alone can say this is occultic power this is demonic this it, there is a spirit that blinds the eyes of people so that no your good is evil spoken of are we together you can sow a seed to someone they'll say you are trying to bribe the family are you not seeing am i the only ones there are people that have the, they are sincere but never believed they bless you they are persecuted for blessing you they heal the sick and pay the price they open a branch and pay the price it takes grace to be loved not good intention my parents were right when they named me the way to love they saw very far so when people love you i have been moved the last few weeks look at the concert we held and you mean that rain and i saw many of you jumping up and down and rejoicing no it's a grace it's a grace the race is not to the swift there are very anointed men of god that someone would prefer to listen to the tape than to come and sit down physically so why do i have to travel that far and leave all the men of god in my city to come and sit down you know someone was talking to me and said apostle i think you spend too much time seeing people after service you go home past 12 it's not fair and i said oh dear i know how constraining it is for me sometimes i'm coming from another meeting but this is the least i can do to these dear people some of them come from as early as 12 and they sit they pray for me they sow into my life how busy can i get what else will i be doing it's true i will cancel any meeting a thousand times to make sure you are trained you are built you are mentored i rather fail sincerely speaking god you are spiritual people i'm not a politician I rather fail so that you will succeed because if you succeed by me failing then I succeeded it's true there is nobody let me tell you that I don't believe in pray in one minute and say Lord help my heart to receive help my heart to be open you are being trained and mentored to become something you may not look like it now but brothers and sisters you just follow with humility it may take time you may compare your life with others and it may look as if you are slow you just follow and let time tell where god is taking you to please pray lord the grace to listen yes i know i'm a man of god i know i have revelation i know i have anointing but lord the grace to listen the grace to see beyond a man lord i receive grace to be committed i reject every suggestion by satan to alienate me from what you are doing in this season
Lord, I know that you are calling me to an extraordinary ministry. There is a reason why you have planted me here. There is a reason why you are equipping me. I may not have all the money that I need now. Others may seem to have gone ahead of me, but like Jesus walking on water, I know you are taking me somewhere. He'll lead me and guide me to the city of above. He'll lead me and guide me to my place of destiny. of my season in the name of rushing to look for results you're a man of god here pray that prayer twice lord may i may i resist the pressure of premature manifestation may i resist the pressure of pride and arrogance your life may look slower than the normal pace but when god is done with you you will find out that what you would have been doing has already been done in your obedience. Lift your voice and pray. It's a costly thing to go ahead of God. It's a costly thing to preach ahead of God. It's a costly thing to move ahead of God. The Bible says with God, not before God with god when you walk with him there's an old hymn that says when we walk with the lord in the light of his word not when we go ahead of him men will force you to move ahead of seasons in your life they will make you do things god is not saying they will pressure you to open doors god is not opening and destroy you and laugh at you when you fall but happy is the man that can sustain the stamina to walk at God's pace. Please pray, Lord, the grace. Hallelujah. I remember years ago, a particular friend, a pastor friend then, he met me then, Koinonia had not started. We just used to hold the weekly programs then on campus. And he met me one day and said, man of God, you need to go for TV ministry. The level of your anointing, even some bishops don't have. That's supposed to be a good advice. The same advice of Peter, Jesus, don't die. You are too innocent to go to the cross. And that advice looked like a nice advice. And they just felt you are on that. Please, write books, do this, do that. And every time I went to the Lord, the Lord made me know that, son, it is within my power to make you anything. So if I don't, it's because there is a time appointed. People told me, why don't start a church? Do something. Do this. Do that. Start TV ministry. Buy a car. Buy this. Buy that. You see, let me tell you, the steps of a spiritual man is very strange. A spiritual man is not a natural man. 
don't sit down you how you know you are spiritual is the pathway of your life is meticulously guarded by the will of god others can go the way they want but god says remember anytime i look at you there is a nation in you so they can you it is your obedience that will correct their mistakes they can go but you can't just go like them there are some of you you started your spiritual work with the same level with many others that have churches and branches today and sometimes they may look at you and say man of god you are the one who mentored us and god says sit down i know what i'm doing with you because when i'm done with you there are certain kinds of graces and mantles that must come and god says sit down are we together please i want you to listen men will mock you they will misunderstand you there is nothing unusual we just are not students of history that's why this thing surprises us go and read the bible any great vision is fought by hell you see why your life is fought by hell the devil will fight you tooth and nail because he would rather you die in your death is the death of a generation so he would rather you die instead of killing the generation one by one he says kill moses instead of killing the entire earth human race kill jesus let me tell you this this is a sensitive season in the spirit satan is not looking for everybody there are people he will pass looking for others your 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 destiny if the devil ever stops to consider you there's something he's seeing it's not just i will live long i will live old no there are people here listen to me satan stopped attacking your family and turned to you because he found out out of everything he searched he found out if i can destroy her prayer life if i can destroy the anointing that i'm seeing this man of God is surely a prophet of God. He does not even know it. But if I can kill that grace, then there is no need fighting 120 people. There is no need of fighting a Decapolis if it can make one man mad. And so because of that, listen, the devil will fight you. You may want to get up and come for koinonia and the devil will relax now. Can't you get the tape afterwards? It's an attack. It's an attack. People will mock you sometimes and say you have been going to church. What is it to show for your life? No job, no house. Everybody is moving forward and they are leaving you. And you feel stupid for staying with God. This my God? Ah. He is my God and his name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. and the poor to you god is giving you something that you will never be ashamed of it's not something you will use for 10 years and need another thing no there are see listen 
you can get a degree you can get a master's you can get a phd and life will evolve such that what you studied may no longer be useful it is possible you can start a business and your product life evolves such that your product is no longer needed like a typewriter are we together every other thing in life needs constant evolution but when you know him when you find him when he anoints you my brother you stay through any time there is no mortal man who can edge you out of the systems of god they can believe you are gone god will show them you are still there listen years ago when god was training me i remember one of the things that god told me he said son take your eyes away from the vanities of men the flamboyancy of ministry you just stay with me let me teach you there are many things i would later learn in my life i didn't know that was what the holy spirit was teaching me the holy spirit is a priceless asset don't mind the ignorant people that make it look like it doesn't pay to follow him you will look stupid while you follow him but when he's done with you he will bring beauty and glory they will look at you and your life will be Beulah and Hephzibah. You can do ministry the way you want to do. You can believe you have all the revelation you need and all the anointing. You just start going. On the way, you will see what dimensions of the kingdom you have ignored. And the price you will have to pay. And the price you will make others pay. For not paying attention. It's not enough to be called. It's not enough to feel trained. It's not enough to feel ready. You must be approved of God. Our level of carnality in this generation is becoming very serious. We ignore the voice of God. We just want to do things and get up and do it. No respect for the timing of God. No respect for spiritual things. Listen. Listen. We live by common sense. We run by principles, but we fly by instructions. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? When you want to walk in life one step, you can use brain work. Brain work is how many people want to achieve their destiny. The time in your life is too short to use brain work to be great. Then you use principles to run. But if it is flight, you will have to work on instructions. Those who teach pilots are not called teachers. They are not called lecturers. They are not called advisors. They are called instructors. Please sit down. Let's go to the word. I just, I just thought to, to just allow the Holy Spirit talk to us. You know when when people see the anointing of the spirit upon my life many people believe it's just luck i was just fortunate to be anointed or i was just called and ordained to be anointed or i was just fortunate to meet anointed people and god anointed me you really believe that there are people who know nothing about the anointing but then they will tell you don't mind all these people and yet you don't we see wisdom is justified by her children brothers and sisters it is God that is the confirmer of everything if God is not confirming something in your life then listen to the person he's confirming something in his life are we together One of the most dangerous things that can happen to a man is pride. You, you keep hearing me say this thing all the time. Pride is not just wrong. It truly is evil. You will watch yourself entering a pit and going down per second per second. Yet pride will make you believe you are in control. You are in charge. I am very open to want to know the areas in my life where I am ignorant because if I don't pay attention to them 
that would be the advantage of satan in my life so i like to know what don't i know thank god for the one i know but what don't i know i'm i'm like a spiritual archaeologist i don't want god to be this way and i'm there jumping what else am i doing because i've learned through experience that the secret to a man's relevance not his making heaven his relevance is to be where god is you can make heaven whether you are where god is or not i just want to be where you are you know that song dwelling in your presence i don't want to worship from afar I want to be where you are, dwelling in your presence, feasting at your table, surrounded by your glory, in your presence, that's where I always want. someone here God is saying be careful I want to announce you greater than you want to announce yourself but just be patient others may announce themselves and say look I am sent of God my father is a priest we are the sons of Skiva and the demons say no we don't know you but God can look at you and say I'm announcing this my daughter I'm announcing this my son it may cost you some momentary inconvenience don't mind it which woman loses her baby just because of birth pains in spite of the fact that the baby she's carrying a child and is inconveniencing she may be tired and almost want to give up but she knows that very soon and when that woman's delivery time is come she may go through all kinds of constraints but when that child comes people who were not supposed to come and visit will find their way and they will not just come alone they will come with gifts don't invite people into your life when the child is not born nobody comes to greet you when you are pregnant if you can stay through and the child comes then you deserve every gift the wise men were around but they never came to mary it was after jesus was born the magi they came the Bible says they brought, they came and bowed down before a baby. Not before Mary or Joseph. They bowed down before a baby and brought gifts of, of gold, of frankincense and myrrh. When you stay with God and birth what he's put in. And you see, God doesn't do nine months pregnancy. The pregnancy depends on many things. You can carry a child for five years. The first child can be delivered in four months and then the second child in seven years. This is God for you. Are we together? The first child can just be something that is very simple in the spirit. But the second child can be the core of your anointing. You will stay there. Someone can have seven births of spiritual reality. And you stay with one forever. As if it's caused. But when that child comes, you will find out that all those seven will need that one child to be able to live. That's why you had to stay that long. When they looked at the womb of her with child, they said there are two nations, not two babies. Two nations. Hallelujah. So pay attention. You are not just here to receive tea and bread. You don't need to put yourself under this kind of constraint if all you need in life is tea and bread. What God is giving you in this place is more than tea and bread. It's more than just a successful life. As important as it is. It's more than just prosperity. In as much as we know prosperity. It's more than just influence. God is giving you something. That cannot be bought in any market on earth. He's putting something in your life. That makes it impossible. For some of you what you are receiving is the remedy for these complexes. And all this inferiority that our families have put in us. 
for when you have something that only God can provide then men must look for you that's what he's giving you are planning to save to buy a house he's giving you what will make house owners come to you and say can I have the privilege of having you in my estate God is showing you a more excellent approach to life it looks strange because it's not a mainstream approach to life but you walk with God and see a time will come you will turn back and not have needs again and you say Lord what did he do I say it's a more excellent way you follow the way men, men follow to be established to live their lives you are going to leave God somewhere in your equation especially in our generation you must leave God somewhere but when he guides you when he leads you ah. hallelujah blessed be the name of the Lord pray in the spirit for one minute and say Lord open my eyes through your word tonight Blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Tonight I'm preaching a message I titled Spiritual Stability. Please listen to this message. It's a powerful message and it will bless you. Spiritual Stability three scriptures first Corinthians 15 and verse 58 spiritual stability I didn't have any divine revelation for this message but the message has come as a response to a need that I've seen in the body of Christ that we need to explore the keys that are responsible for being grounded and being established in spiritual things are we together the teaching is an attempt to address the vacillations that we continually experience in our work with God based on a number of factors that we're going to be discussing that a believer can not only grow but can become stable are we together yes so it's, it's, it's an attempt to explore the keys to a grounded and productive Christian life it matters to you and matters to God that your Christian life be grounded and productive the Bible declares once and again that hearing is our father glorified it says when we bear much fruit it says that we produce fruit and that our fruits abide are we together three scriptures very quickly follow me tonight I hope we are able to finish it tonight therefore my beloved brethren be ye steadfast unmovable then it says always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord Paul is speaking here to the church in Corinth and he's telling believers that they be steadfast and then unmovable, unshakable, unbendable. So it is possible that a man can be stable in his Christian experience. Ephesians chapter 4, please, and verse 14. The Bible, speaking about the fivefold ministry, he says that we henceforth the matured ones the ones who have been built now by the gifts that the that, that, that God has supplied the body that we henceforth be no more what please talk to me children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive so there is a level of spiritual stability that a believer can get he can attain onto a realm and a level in his work with God where you are unbendable where you you are so fortified that deception becomes an impossible experience for you it is possible 
one more scripture and then we'll begin to teach colossians chapter 2 please we'll read from verse 6 to 8 colossians chapter 2 it says as ye therefore received christ jesus the lord so walk ye in him we're reading to verse 8 7 it says rooted read with me rooted and built up in him stop there notice it didn't just say built up rooted and then built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught abounding therein with thanksgiving verse 8 beware so you are not just being aware just by an information something you are doing in verse 7 is what will sustain this lest any man spoil you these are the various ways that men can be made to vacillate spiritually ready through number one is what please talk to me philosophy and then vain deceit and then the traditions of men and then the redoments another word there is the patterns the modus operandi the system of operation of this world and not after christ it is possible that a man can live his life manifesting the knowledge that just comes through philosophy and then vain deceit and then the tradition of men and then the redoments of this world you can believe this today and then tradition tells you no things are done this way and then you readjust your life to suit tradition are we together and while you are trying to gain stability through tradition all of a sudden the rudiments of this world these are the things that destroy us they say this is how they do it in life you don't even know who puts that room no this is how they do it this is how they do this this is how parenting happens this is how marriage happens this is how prosperity happens this is how ministry is done the bible says beware prophesy to yourself say beware he said lest any man so who are the men who are the people the vessels that the devil uses they are not just angels they are men let any man spoil you the word spoil you there doesn't mean corrupt the word spoil you means to plunder to steal from you like an asset something of treasure has been given to you and then a man comes to spoil you like you come and rob a man and carry everything that is treasurable he said beware that means you are possessing something that has potential something of worth but beware lest men come sometimes innocently but they are in the similitude of robbers they can spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit and the tradition of men and the redoments this is the one that even disturbs me the most the redoments of this world this is how it is done it's amazing how many people's destinies have been wrong perpetually they one of the ways that people have become failures in life is by aligning to a tradition and a pattern that has been obeyed for a long time but is wrong just because someone did something and kept doing it kept doing it for decades they can tell you this is it in this family nobody really you all this your jesus thing we love jesus and you the person who is talking is not very serious with god and he's marketing his template of spirituality to you and every time you show any unusual passion they say see we did this thing and left it the regiments of this world and people even turn scriptures in the bible and say see the bible even said don't be over what, what, over righteous over spiritual and the person who is sharing that thing doesn't love the word of god he just found a scripture that will give him a basis for laxity and unseriousness a man can be stable spiritually as a man of God it's important to realize that you are mentoring and building people based on the truth you are convicted about let me tell you this not everybody can receive the correction that you propose after receiving your error not everybody will be alive and within your reach are we together if i teach you come if i teach you something erroneous now 
and 10 years down the line this brother goes abroad and he's in the u.s he has institutionalized that error and is paying the price life is whipping him for it and i later go and find the truth and i say people sorry what i said 10 years ago is a mistake this guy may never live to hear it he will still be carrying the mindset of me of 10 years ago and even when god is telling him adjust he said no way apostle said this that's why it is important that men of god we become the first guinea pigs to our revelations before propose it's not just anything you hear on tape and anything you feel is nice or anything by a man of god you love and respect you just ship and just spill everything to your people when people are loyal to you that means they have come to a point where either through a track record or a divine revelation they have come to accept your word as the word of god over their lives so they have opened up their spirits that any communication that comes from this man of god should be received subconsciously they have come to a point where they they have they have found comfort in following you as you follow after christ and you have a responsibility to probe and vet every revelation that is communicated to make sure it is worthy of giving to a generation not just members beware thank you lest any man spoil you are we together through philosophy vain deceit traditions of men and the rudiments of this world and not after christ it's amazing how you see people believe this today and they don't believe this tomorrow today i believe deliverance tomorrow i don't believe deliverance today i believe prosperity then i read one book by somebody i respect and all of a sudden i hate money next tomorrow i believe the gifts of the spirit the day after i believe common sense next tomorrow i believe divine direction the next ah, ah. no those those vacillations are very very dangerous you must be established to know that you can look at your children and say children before you were born this was what i stood for and even now as i am old i'm standing for this i called god a faithful god when i was 18 i am 85 he's still a faithful god i have not created another wrong name based on an experience that's the goal of this teaching and i'm going to share with you three keys that the lord or four that god has put in my heart keys that will create stability in your christian life because you see the internet social media um christian channels and all kinds of spiritual platforms right now on one hand they have benefited the body of christ but on another hand they have created gross confusion there are many people you have heard people you love and respect say things that have almost rattled the foundation of your convictions it's easy to resent somebody you don't believe but what happens when you hear someone who you love so much is saying and doing and standing for things that now makes you confused and so i must share with you otherwise we are going to be in serious trouble especially as a man of god here there is no guarantee that the person you look up to will continue to stand straight so in as much as you look up to people it's important to create a system are we together otherwise we are going to be in trouble you follow men as they follow christ not just as they go before you you follow men as they follow christ meaning that the day you don't see christ before them you are permitted to live it this is this is this in itself this thing i just said in itself can bring me a lot of trouble because sometimes we men of god teach people that trying to probe whether you are still following christ as they follow you can draw a cost to their life and even when people have long left the things of god they still demand loyalty from people no you follow a man of god as he follows christ if you're with me say amen. amen the first key that you need to have stability in your christian experience and please i don't want you to forget this the first key is an experiential revelation of god write it down an experiential revelation of god i can spend the whole night talking here if 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 we're unable to to exhaust this within the time we have then we can just have part two of it 
an experiential revelation of God. Look up, please. There is the experience of the kingdom. John chapter 3, when you read um, from, verse, from verse 1 down to 3, let's, let's go to verse 3. But Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night and says to him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God, he says. He says, for no man can do these things except God be with him. And then verse 3, John, ah, uh, okay, keep verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom. Take note of the word see. Verse 4. Nicodemus now says, Can a man be born when he's old? You know, can he enter into his mother's womb the second time? And then verse 5. Jesus clarifies and says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born of water and of the spirit. Then he changes his terminology. He cannot enter enter the kingdom of God he's talking about two related but different experiences there to see the kingdom and to enter the kingdom there is an experience of God listen very carefully there is an experience there is the knowledge of God a theoretical knowledge which is not wrong in itself are we together but there is the experience the experience of God the Bible says, oh, taste and see, not just hear and believe. There is a place you hear, but there is a place you can taste, you can see. Your sensory perceptions can participate in your knowing God. Brothers and sisters, the times that we are living in will require you knowing a God that you have an experience over. It's good to know Joshua Selman's God. It's good to know this and that man of God's God. But you must come to a point where you glean from their own experience and then create a road map through it until he becomes your God. Are we together? The experiential revelation of God. The Bible says, and the people that do know their God, not the people that do hear that there is a God. The heathens heard already about the God of the Hebrews, but they did not know him. Let, let me tell you this. Your life will be at the mercy of your experiential revelation of who God is to you. And there are three ways that God is revealed experientially. In fact, I think there's a message that I preached some years, knowing God experientially. You can get that message. It will bless you in no small way. But three major ways. Ready? Number one. The first way to have an experiential revelation of God is through his word, the written word. 1 Samuel 3.21. 1 Samuel 3.21. God can give men encounters through his word. I told you that the word of God, the logos, are we together? Just keep the scripture there. But make reference quickly on your notes to John 1 verse 1. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word. The Greek word there is logos. The logos of God, the thoughts of God. A compendium of his character, his methodology. Encapsulated in a material. So that as you study that material, you not only cram scripture, but it expands your spiritual horizon to understand how God behaves. The logos. A man can experience God through his word. The Bible says, And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh. How? By the word of the Lord. So God can use his word to reveal himself. You can know his character based on his word. I know Sam. Come Sam. I know Sam, I've worked with Sam for many years. He's an amazing gentleman and I love him very much. Because I have interacted with him very much. Are we together? There is something that someone can come and meet me now and say, Apostle, Sam said I should tell you A, B, C. I will make reference to the track record of my working with him. Are we together? And know whether Sam can say this or not. I would rather be wrong and say sorry to that person, but as far as that information is concerned, I can throw it away. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, the word of God is a revelation. 
um, one of our dear media ladies, I, I, I was during my birthday. She has a blog page, a wonderful blog page, by the way. You can, you honestly would want to just go to her blog page. Very rich, wonderful materials. And that lady, I can't even remember the name of the blog page. It was, it was shown me, and I went through it. And she wrote certain quotes or certain things that that I say that has inspired. I didn't even know that I've stressed those points that much to become a quote. Are we together? Now, if one young man gets up and says, I know apostle. Apostle is my spiritual father. Apostle is my this, my apostle is my mother, is my uncle, is my sister. And says all those kinds of things. And they say two quotes from him. And he just says one kind of thing. He said, no, it's Miles Muro that said this one now. It's not. <laughs> Are you seeing that now? Automatically, you know that this guy is a liar. If someone says, I attend Koinonia every time, there are a few tests. Very few litmus tests. I mean, you don't need to, you can't fake it. Just, there are very few things. Anybody at all, even if you are not a faithful member, there are just certain things. You can know that, no, it's a lie. Someone attends Koinonia, hear someone shout and say, what's happening? He say, ah, I thought you said you attend this. You are not, something is betraying you somewhere. So the logos of God. Thank you, Sam. The word of God was not just given for us to cry is a compendium of his way of behavior through different dispensations so that as we study we have the mind of Christ are we together we have an understanding of the way he behaves so the Lord appeared to Samuel in Shiloh by the word number two the way remember we're still on point one now I hope I hope I'm not confusing you you can call it point a through his word B, the second way experiential revelation of God is given to the saints. Now pay attention. Is through the family of believers. Your interaction with the family of believers. What the Bible calls the household of faith. Many people do not know that your interaction with a kingdom community of believers can help you experience God. Hmm. The family of true believers the household of faith is one of the platforms that God designed for men to encounter him experientially a number of scriptures Acts chapter 2 please we'll read 42 to 47 Acts chapter 2 Acts chapter 2 42 to 47 And they continued steadfastly. Listen carefully. Who are the they? The community of believers. Is that true? The Bible says steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. And what? Talk to me. And fellowship. And in breaking of bread and in prayers. We are reading to 47, 43. And fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. 44. And all that believed were what? All that believed were not apart there was a community system so this issue of kingdom community I have I have proposed again and again that the keys to maintaining kingdom values one of the keys is to create a community of believers no believer can truly become matured in the spirit in isolation you must be grafted to a family of faith that is territorial are we together and all that believed were together and had all things in common 45 they sold their possession and their goods and parted them all uh, to all men uh, you know as everyone had a need 46 and they listen continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking of bread from what house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. What was the result? 47. Praising God, the Bible says, and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily as should be saved. That means God was supporting that community life. Saying you are getting it right. Everywhere there is a community of believers. That is a platform that was created by God. To see that believers rise, continue to grow. The benefit they get is God's support by adding daily. Not weekly, not monthly, not per fellowship. Daily. 
they were praising God having favor with all the people the Lord added to the church he calls them the church daily such as should be saved the family of faith Galatians 6 verse 10 where we get the word household of faith very powerful scripture then give us Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 I'm giving you scriptures like this because I want to support what I'm teaching intelligently there are all kinds of people we minister to people from different nations now if let me teach you this this is a place for mentorship so we believe in excellence but I want you to learn the motivation behind the things that I do you see when you begin to mentor people who come from different geographic and cultural context I can talk to all of you without bringing one scripture because there is a track record of your understanding my pattern of teaching are we together you know that every time I speak I will support it but maybe in France or the US or somewhere someone right now who may be hedonistic is listening and just has a Bible or an unbeliever a Muslim who just gave his life to Christ so you will need to support these points they may look basic to you oh one point is enough apostle I'm convinced but I'm not just talking to you alone when you begin to minister at a global level you must have the patience and the simplicity to carry the larger crowd of people along otherwise a time will come your doctrine will only be understood by those who are close to you and that is because of the track record you have created are you getting this now so galatians 6 verse 10 it says as we therefore as we have therefore opportunity let us do good to how many men all men but it says let your focus be on a community of believers this those who are of the household of faith you encounter god through a spiritual community life let me tell you this you have a spiritual family just like a physical family and the spiritual family of course ultimately is our family connected to God but on earth and territorially you will never prosper spiritually if you are not connected to a larger body of a spiritual family God designed it that way are we together there are all kinds of spiritual possibilities that are vested broadly speaking in the body of Christ but uniquely speaking to the spiritual family that God connects to you friends revelation access to anointing access to help there are many believers when they are in trouble for instance and they need to see the mercy of god there is no man and there is no community to come and reveal the mercy of god to them someone dies you are alone nobody to come and greet you you give birth to a child nobody you are not part of any larger body of believers that can be sympathetic to what you are doing when you need to see the hand of God you are not connected to anyone most times when people come and talk to me and say apostle this is a, somebody a member of koinonia and all of that most times I ask what department he says I'm not in any department but I can assure you I'm faithful says, you are marking yourself already how do you know you are faithful community life is very powerful when it has to do with experiencing God a, a spiritual family shields you there are some of us here right now physically you almost don't have a family either everybody has died or everybody is completely wayward and not of god or everybody hates you and already you are just like a prodigal son but for a good reason until you find god don't come back home are we together some of us are unbelievers who are the first christians in our family so you really don't have you can't stand there in isolation look at this how many of you have seen charcoal burning coal burning red hot coal remove one red hot one and just keep it don't off the uh, what they call it now just leave it there don't pour water on it after a while what happens it starts going down so the strength of that fire was the community life notice that every time satan wants to destroy a life one of the ways is he will make everybody in your community your enemy he will make you to have problem with everyone your head of department apostle anybody when all your helpers have been driven through your hatred when you are alone 
it's not only god that comes to jacob when he's alone satan too comes when you are alone he can come to you and say now that the person who can pray for you is gone now that the sister that can support you you have you have hated her and you have insulted her i can now strike you and your pride will not allow you run to them so you will stay there till they find your dead body spiritually community life is powerful are we together now when the believers were afraid and they were persecuted imagine if all of them hid one by one they went somewhere and stayed alone even in times of crisis as in physically speaking the security when people are clustered within an area it becomes even if they are afraid it becomes difficult for the enemy to just break every siege there some of us stand alone and do everything alone and we flatter ourselves into believing that we are strong my bible says two are better than one is that true the bible says then when they become three they become a, a cord that cannot be easily broken community life is a powerful system to have an experience of god when you come into the sanctuary there are dimensions of god that you ordinarily would not have gotten in your personal place of prayer but God reveals himself as the word of God is coming now as you look at your brother someone taking the testimony promise is coming to take the testimony you are learning something about God somebody is doing this you are learning something they raise a song of worship you see a Jimmy worshiping wow so great men can worship God this vocally you are what the the worship team revealing the excellence of God there are things you will never learn just sitting down in your room are we together listen let me tell you this let us encourage and, and, and i'm saying this from a personal point encourage your children to have a desire for the house of god not just the things of god there are families here that come as a family for koinonia i truly am honored when i see that because it's, it's not just a sacrifice they are salvaging a generation especially some of these are young children some of them hate god the devil is planting a seed of hatred in them have you seen them they come to the house of god they never enter and sit down they stroll around they uh, they hang around they move around they are making calls they are doing this if they say something that is funny they laugh outside and then they turn they continue you give them offering they go and buy uh, uh what do we call it puff puff around and they are eating let's not let's not it's not a laughing matter it's a sign that we are losing something are we together the house of god so you go home now and you say let's pray see the child frowning his face he's coming to sit down it's time for prayer i say please this prayer that they are lying in this house it's better to be lying with prayer it's better community life community life hebrews 10 25 hebrews 10 25 not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is he said but exhorting one another and so much the more as he see the day approaching are we together that we should not forget and forsake the assembly of ourselves you've heard me listen to my message um preservers of divine ordinances part one and two i teach there that any spiritual environment is bankrupt if there is no platform that can create a convergence of believers for the purpose of training equipping and mentorship you can look at a territory and know that there are no apostolic and prophetic voices because there is no platform honored by god you see his signature there as a prophetic platform that has nothing to do with denominational barriers you know that this one is god making his presence known mentoring a territory to know him it's not just tied to i am this i am that i'm apostle this i'm prophet this i'm apostle joshua Selma. no there has to be a, a platform 
where believers are mentored where they grow are we together let's read one more scripture Hebrews chapter 3 verse 12 and 13 and then we'll move to something that I think um, we can just stop at point one I don't know I don't know let's see how God will help us so you have an experiential revelation of God that's the first key and that by his word number one number two by the presence your participation in the household of faith Hebrews chapter 3 from verse 12 take heed brethren look up please lest there be any of you let there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God next verse 13 but exhort one another how long exhort one another not exhort God exhort one another that means I have a role to play in your spiritual growth you have a role to play in my life you will think that because I am the one who is majorly building you you don't have any role he said exhort one another daily while it is called today lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin that means something happens come pastor Femi that pastor Femi can be a powerful believer but in isolation to the supply of the body are we together now there is no system of exhortation he may not even know when he has veered off sincerely and not know but that the presence of the corporate body is a spiritual system for check and balance are you getting what i'm saying now you may not know you may be busy pastor femi and maybe have two months of ministration all around and not have the time to pray for instance and you may be justifying yourself but when you come now and see that i'm busier than you and yet i'm still praying by that act i have exhorted you i have killed the excuse the devil wants to take to say i am busy you go back and say no if i'm just doing one ministration per week and it's affecting my prayer life someone that is doing three are you seeing that now yeah the moment you want to become proud and arrogant i just got one million and then you come and turn and you see a jimmy lying down ah and you say how much is his shirt how much is his shoe you just say i, I better drop my my small one million that is entering my head and lie down and roll before god you are exhorting you don't just exhort by talking your life shows it too when you see people that love god more than you rolling on the ground sometimes you don't plan to roll but when you look around ah benga is kneeling ah daddy prof is kneeling hey, Jimmy is rolling promise is rolling you turn back sam is kneeling you will feel stupid as what i say do you better join and kneel down those outside are falling more than those inside are we together yes it is the absence of this corporate life that makes local champions leave god there is no system have when when you start making money and you go where wealthy people are worshiping god they throw their phone away and roll on the floor you just stand and say this is my boss this is the person that gave me the job that i've been testifying i heard she was a millionaire before i was born so this is how this woman rose before God. You call your wife and say, wife, we will roll on that carpet. Roll on the ground. Sometimes you need someone higher than you to show you how to serve God. Because you see, every time you have results, sometimes they confuse you. How do I serve God at this new level? And God says, come to the house of God. Ah, I started prophesying and right now one month everybody is placing a demand on my grace and then god says oh yeah come and meet a prophet who started prophesying before you were born again and see how he serves god and all of a sudden you are dancing i got an award and this award is this and that and god says come let me show you the person who owns the company that gives the award and how he's serving god corporate life does so much many things happen in this service beyond the pulpit you can have a heart of wickedness to annoy a brother or sister and all of a sudden they use their kindness and torture you all through the service 
you say nasty things they say no problem it's well this is my seat is no, okay sit down and while they sit down favor just come somebody says sit, sit here every bad thing you are doing god is speaking to you in that service with results your message in that service becomes look it is it is good to be good this bad attitude work on it you will be surprised i may be teaching on the anointing but that's the message you came to the house of god there are many believers that are not like christians because they are alienated from the house of god they cannot do you know that the house of god even helps you to speak well i mean educationally i'm not talking of spiritually many dull people around who have alienated when you listen to a man you listen to a people that have some measure of excellence do you know that it will affect you many people look at our uh, look at the children in koinonia you see how intelligent they are because they are gleaning from adults they go back and meet their their colleagues who don't they are not smart they they, they just fail everything like that and say ah, what is wrong that's why the children of pastors are very intelligent because from birth everybody holding them is praying or speaking or blessing they don't have the opportunity for wickedness to touch them that's why satan keeps timing them you are in the house of god turn to your neighbor and say this and that turn to your neighbor and do this you can even help socialize you came from a bad background where you even hate yourself you came to the house of god and you are somebody who is shy you can't turn and tell somebody god bless you and before you know it someone carries his hand gives you a big hug and you are like ah so this is how this thing is by next sunday you are ready come on now talk to me koinonia watch this the first person who ever hugged you was somebody in the house of god and you felt so bad you thought there were strings attached until they told you that's how they are here and you say really and somebody looks at you and says the lord told me you never knew that god can speak to men to bless you but someone just turns and says pastor femi um, I don't know are you a first timer yes the Lord asked me to give you 10,000 whereas you came God told you to leave your house and come by faith that someone will pay your transport if you didn't come to the house of God you will never experience God that way are you getting what I'm saying when you neglect the gathering of the saints it is not the same thing as listening to a tape there are things your eyes need to see there are things your ears need to hear. I believe it's even one of the reasons, eh, Jimmy, why our generation keeps marrying bad wives and husbands. Where are you going to get a good wife? Let's be very sincere. Your chances of getting a very good God, remember, you need to marry somebody who believes what you, are, what you believe. You pray in tongues and somebody say, I'm calling police. Is, is that marriage? No. Or the man wants to sow and say, for what? How much are we earning that we're going to sow? Because you don't understand these principles. Take seriously what I'm saying. Many believers, I, I don't know, sometimes I don't know what is wrong with us. We come and we sit down and then we go outside, go and ship all versions of unbelievers, bring into our lives and the devil said, thank you. That one thing I've been looking for to cheat you in life, you finally gave me. Ah, the brothers in church are not nice. The sisters in church, let me tell you, it's better to die in church. Oh. Let me just give you a very honest statement. Because God is always found in the midst of the lampstands. If a brother slaps you in church, there's somebody he submits to, you can report. If your, if your wicked bubble somewhere slaps you, who will you report to? His father. Listen. Hallelujah. Sit down. As, as you are hearing me, you see God is saying many things this night. But there are many stubborn believers that as God is talking now, you have programmed your spirit to be as hardened as whatever. May you be delivered this night in the name of Jesus. Any, any unbeliever somewhere, just go and fool you and laugh around and say, oh, don't mind all these God people. You are going to your church again. Haba, you can't make this sacrifice for me. That's already a Luciferian spirit. It's a revelation to run away fast. 
He has not married you. He, 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 he's, he's stopping. He's resenting a man of God. The man of God that is training and building you. He's saying, no, don't mind all these people. And you are truly, you are not minding them. Say the house of God. People have gotten jobs because of their connection. Is that true? With Christian families. Please learn this thing. Many of our loved ones are suffering in pride because there is a dimension of the love and the mercy of God in the house of God that they have ignored. By God's grace, in this ministry, as you know, we have a system that provides help for people. It may be in limited ways, but at least we make sure we do. There are people just being members of Koinonia, their school fees were settled till they graduated. They didn't come from families that could allow that. And they saw the love of God. And it's not necessarily that it was me that paid it. Some of them just came together. Ah, this is your final year. You got born again in January. Oh, it's better than nothing. You are welcome. So what's the issue now? My school fees. How much do you have? 1,000. How much is left? 40,000. No. Believers, let's come together. Let me tell you. Don't let anybody make you hate the church. Hear what I'm saying. Don't let... I know that we have issues. I'm not saying we don't have issues. Are we together? But don't make anybody... When we started this ministry, our fun, our jokes, our time out, everything was among believers. It's why you see the marriages in this ministry very solid and powerful. Are we together? Very solid and powerful. Is God speaking to you? Stability through fellowship. That God is revealing, he's, he's experientially revealing himself. Please, sisters, let me say it again. Don't marry anybody. Don't even say yes. Don't say let's try two months or two months. No, don't even do one day. Don't marry anybody that is not connected to any spiritual family. Even if he tells you he's born again. I repeat, don't marry any man. Insult me, but just listen any man this i love you i love you thing this we are in the end times the devil is 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 destroying people's destinies you will be unfair not just to yourself but to the children that are coming out of you that's how you have all these people go around deceiving these girls that they are christians before you know it the moment they get married they say i hope you know you understand that me when it's cold i take a, 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 a this thing and the lady saying, I never saw, I said, is this just because I gave a little break? The, the house of God has a system that ensures you get it right. Well, it's my job to teach and say what I'm saying. It's your own job to listen and hear what I'm saying as a word from the Lord or stubbornly decide to do whatever you want. I will always pray for you even if you crash land. I have loved you with an everlasting love. But my advice is that it is better to be happy by listening. Are we together? Thank you, Pastor Femi. Number, number three, still on point one. Remember, I'm teaching on the keys that create stability in your work with God. And the first point we said was an experiential revelation of God. And we broke it down into a few points. Number one is that the word of God can help you experience God. Number two, the family of believers. Are you ready for number three? Number three. Now hold on please. Pay attention here. If this is where we stop tonight, then media this becomes part one. Are we together? This becomes spiritual stability part one. I doubt if we'll be able to finish because there are four points. But the third way of knowing God experientially is through your pain and challenges. Write it down. I want to seriously teach here. Psalms 107. We are going to read verse 6, verse 13, verse 19 and 28. 6, 13, 19, 28. Actually, the whole verse there. I want to make you love your past tonight. Not necessarily past and all you know many times we men of god teach hate the past leave it yes but i want to show you there is something from your yesterday that can reveal the god of your tomorrow they cried unto the lord when not in their comfort 
they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. And what did he do? He came in as a deliverer. Next verse. Verse, um, what now? 13. Please give us verse 13. Still 107 Psalms 13. They cried unto the Lord again in their trouble. What did he do? He didn't deliver them. He saved them. Are you seeing different dimensions? They cry unto the Lord. Their trouble makes them to cry unto the Lord. Let me tell you this, brothers and sisters. I hate to be a bearer of bad news. But there is something about your pain and the knowledge of God. There is a relationship between your tears. There is a relationship between your challenges and your disappointments. And the unique revelation of God to you. Pain and challenges force, force us to need and prioritize God. Write it down. Your pain and your challenges, they have a way of forcing you to need and prioritize God. There are many of us, it's not that you have left God, but sincerely, He's not a priority. And so certain times when, when certain things shake you and hit you, all of a sudden you will remember that there, I, I need to run back to God. I need to make things right with them. I don't believe that God goes around causing people pain and sorrow. No, the Bible says every good and perfect gift. But because of our human nature, God utilizes every unfavorable moment. Let me tell you, a spiritual man is one who can turn both glory and pain into something that helps him to know God we have this we have this um, we have this level there, there's something about believers we frown at pain when believers go through challenges and sometimes the church again we are the ones who bring these kinds of things come Sam all of a sudden something happens to Sam maybe he loses a loved one are we together and God forbid Sam, just an example. And or something happens to him, there's disappointment somewhere. And you hear believers come. Ah, ah Sam, didn't you hear God? What this didn't this happen? Didn't this happen? Whereas God is, is taking advantage of that opportunity to say, Sam, I'm bringing you to a point where there is something about me you otherwise would not know. If he did not go to the cave of Adullam, David would never know certain things about God. Please listen to what I'm saying. If you started that ministry from day one and 1,000 people came, you will never believe God is a God of process. And so, with all your anointing for the first one year, only two members. The day you did your thanksgiving, four came, two left before the service was over. And you just called your wife. Your wife said, my husband, I've never doubted you, but Kai, today, let me tell you the truth. I know that when you told me God called you, it's not, I'm using, I'm using husband, I'm using a... Come, wife. Now, watch this. I've never doubted you. You said God, God called you. I said, yes, he called you. Are you not seeing what happened? Is it not, is it not my, my anointing that, that made your, your father sick that he allowed me to marry you? Why, when I, what are you, are doubting me today? And then all of a sudden, the man is now touched and said, Lord, if my own wife, that is the surest member of my church, is about to leave, you better speak to me oh did you call me watch this that seven days dry will lead you to call on to god and god just comes and says son write this i it is true i have anointed you to speak my purposes to the nation a b c d when you will now be dancing celebrating 10 years anniversary when it's your time to give the testimony you are now going to say look i know that god is the lifter of men and you see the wife crying because she knows the other members are just laughing they came into the inheritance of the promise but the woman is standing there come darling are we together ah we want to thank god for our mother our this and she's just looking at them lord thank you if i left now this would have buried my head in shame Thank you, Jesus. You have wasted your pain and your challenges. 
and never knew God through them. You conquer challenges not by having a way out, but by seeing God in them. In every challenge, there is a dimension of God that is waiting to be revealed. Listen, brothers and sisters. In every challenge, there is a dimension of God. There are dimensions of God you may never know. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. There are things you hear me say casually about God today, brothers and sisters. It's because of the abundance of what I have gone through there are things that you can hear us say at the beginning of this ministry remember i told you how things didn't work there were times that i prayed i fasted i sowed seeds i've said it you've heard me say it again all my scholarships were spent on the kingdom never spent anything on myself there are times that my heavens will close oh god is this tithing working or not? So when you see somebody come and say, Apostle, I've been tithing since January. Say, just January and you are complaining. <laughs> just January. And it's not like the favor of clothes. It's just that it's not yet enough. You better thank God and keep moving. There's something you know. Let me tell you. When you are too innocent in life, you can't be sent. Um, not, I, 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 no, the word is, I hope, I hope you understand what I mean by innocent. When you are scarless, you can't be sent. There is a level of scar that must be on you as a testament. You are never, please help those under the anointing there. You can never represent God scarless. There is a mark that is a testament. Are we together now? Yes. You've never been disappointed in your life. You've never had to cry in your life. You've never had to lock the door to pray. And as a man of God, just kneel down and say, Lord, I don't hate you, but right now, I don't know what to say. Don't mind all these people that lie all around and make it look like they've been laughing forever. It's a lie. Even Jesus wept. Say it after me. Jesus. One more time. Jesus. The son of the living God. The word that creates everything got to a point in his life. Where is a father? Imagine if that part of Jesus was not captured for us. We'll feel guilty whenever we cry in the midst of challenges. But today, someone can lose a loved one. And while we come, we'll not just say, why didn't you have faith? We will continue to teach on life. But we can join together and cry. And not feel bad. Apostle, you are crying that somebody died. Well, what happened to the anointing that you walk with? No problem. You may laugh at me, but I, I, have, I have learned something with God. That he's not just a mighty God. He can also be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. So I will not just preach life and run away from you when you lose your loved ones. And say, no, 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 we are, are life-giving spirits. No, we are life-giving spirits, but there are women who died and didn't receive the promise. And the Bible joined all and called it faith. So we will cry together. Are we together? Oh, you come and all of a sudden you say, look, apostle, this and that and that and that, this and that. I mean, you know, not to feel bad, but I mean, look at this is how my life is. I made a stupid decision. I, I carried my salary and all of a sudden somebody scammed me and this happened. I'm just, you are stupid. I've been drumming divine direction. No. Compassion. Pain and challenges reveal a dimension of God to you and through you that no other thing, no other dimension of kingdom living can reveal. There are some of you here, God will allow you purposely to stay without food so that the day you become a multi-millionaire, you can look at a family and they can say, Apostle, do you know we love God but as it is, there's no food this night. You will say, well, maybe I have prophesied to you, what else are you waiting for? No compassion is not natural with the natural man something must happen to a man to make him compassionate there's nothing like i'm naturally kind no it is life that can bring someone to his knees there are some of you here for instance you by your normal standard you probably would have been doing phd now or even be professors but some of you you are in 300 level right now it may look like it's a disadvantage but there is something through that pain that is revealing God tomorrow when you see somebody going through things and people say this yeah yeah guys say no I've been there you know why I don't talk against men of God they've persecuted me 
and they do it every time i know the pain of being persecuted i know the pain of being lied about i know the pain of being misunderstood so i will never sow that seed not to you not to anybody that's why i never insult the body of christ when you hear people do that they are still innocent let them continue growing I know the pain of what it means to see a young man with influence like this and say maybe they are using charm or demonic power. No. I know the pain of people trivializing your sacrifice. Everybody say pain. Say challenges. A lady that has entered five or six relationships and has been disappointed by all those brothers gave her heart, gave her all, and those brothers just made life miserable for her. It may be bad, but if you can see Christ through your pain, the sight of him will wipe your tears all of a sudden. And you'll say, thank you. After all I've been through, I still have joy. I still have joy. I still have joy. After all I've been through, I still have joy. What have you gone through in life? Hold on. I want to ask you a question, everyone listening to me. What have you gone through in life that has made you mature? What have you gone through in life that has stopped you from insulting men? What have you gone through in life, man of God, that will make money not to move you? What have you gone through in life? How many of you know that there is a way life whips you that even when you see the result, you don't celebrate much again? Because you started celebrating without the result. You are already used to it. So if someone buys a car, you just say, Lord, thank you. And then you go back and say, Lord, who should I give it to? God says, oh, you can enjoy this one. And it doesn't move you. Because you have learned to rejoice in the midst of pain. I show you a, a this is a very mature spiritual teaching. I believe in prosperity. I will continue to speak over your life to be blessed. I remember one dear lady years ago, one of our, our dear, well, not really part, but a dear lady. It was a few weeks to her wedding when something happened. Cards had been out. Several things happened. I mean, everybody was rejoicing like every other lady. She was happy, ready to rejoice. And then something just went terrible. Cut the long story short, wedding was canceled. I remember when I got the text in my mind I said no my, all I was thinking about is this lady because the same friends that were dancing are the same ones that will run and say ah so you see that that's the thing you do you know this is a dimension of God through men that you need to learn that he's truly a friend that stick it closer than a brother someone who can stand and say I will be with you and all of a sudden the moment they say crucify him they will join the people and say crucify you Many of us don't have the wisdom of the spirit because our lives are too innocent. That's why you trust anybody anyhow. That's why you do anything anyhow. Please listen to what I'm teaching you tonight. Are we together? I remember calling the lady. When I called her, as soon as she picked my call, she started crying. Because people had called that were disappointed. Why didn't you find out A and B and C and D? All kinds of nonsense. See, men, ba, you need to love God to love men. Men can be so wicked, you will be justified to hate them. Are we together? I called that dear lady. I said, sweetheart, where are you? I said, I need to see you. Let's meet in the night. And in her mind, she thought, you know, most times when people hear my messages, they believe that I'm a disciplinarian with all versions of whips. I'm not a stupid person. Are we together? Yes. God gives anointing, but our brains are still there. We are human beings. When I teach, I teach in a preventive way. That's why sometimes you can see I can lash it. But when you are meeting people one-on-one, -on -one, you are dealing with real life issues. We are humans. It doesn't mean it's not an excuse for you not to listen. To just say, okay, so since there's another dimension. There is hellfire and there's mercy too. All created by God. Are we together? I remember calling that lady and when she came I was seeing her inside a car and the first thing I did was to just hug the lady and she began to cry and I didn't say a word 
I just allow sometimes don't stop people from crying too early these tears you see is not just what comes out in an eye it's a language and this lady said apostle why would God do this to me and I said no every time we don't understand God we give thanks it's something I learned through my own pain it's not like I, I learned it before I read it in the Bible. Whenever you don't understand God, just give thanks. Why me is not a wise thing. Lord, why is my church not growing? Why did this and that and that happen? You give thanks. I remember comforting that dear lady. And I told her something. I said, every time God closes a window, check well, a door is about to open and i remember when that lady was going to get married oh it was with honor it was with joy you know the kind of joy that will make you forget the pain of yesterday listen let me speak to someone there are many of you who you have not learned to see god in your pain you have not learned to see god in your challenges i'm encouraging you tonight when you look back don't look at the problems continue to look Mary Magdalene was looking at a graveyard and she saw Jesus there. Jesus is also in the grave. He's not just on the throne. She came to the grave and was looking. Who goes to the grave? Only dead men. There are no living people in the grave. But when you stand through that grave, you can see Jesus looking at you to say, you may have been abused when you were young. You may have gone through all kinds of things, but don't be ashamed of it. I am raising you with an anointing. Tomorrow you are going to have a foundation. One uncle deceived you here and don't worry. And all of a sudden you are healed. You are strengthened and you can rise up and be a blessing. As believers, both our glory and our pains are still weapons that can bring him glory. Is God speaking to someone today? Sometimes I share some of the testimonies of yesteryears, not because I'm stupid. Everybody has his reputation too. I share some of these things and it's amazing how some of these messages comfort some of you. Because if you just see all the things that God is doing today, you may think just because you are anointed, you are shielded from it. Nobody is immune from tears. Jesus wept. Every other person in him will weep too. There are times that life can push you. I've wept at funerals of people here i have had to comfort people we have lost loved ones things have happened around but even at that even when we cannot explain we still say lord thank you lord thank you can you lift your voice in one minute and just say lord thank you even in the midst of the pain in the midst of the pain lord i went through unfavorable things I trusted a man who disappointed me. I trusted my boss, he disappointed me. Lord, I thought by now I would have graduated and standing before me are five carryovers. I thought I would get first class, my last result. I thought I would be promoted and I was driven. But I give you thanks. I give you thanks. I may not understand what you are doing in and through me, but Lord, I know that you do all things. Thank you. Thank you. I will sing. I will pray.
made you to begin to love people. Yes, sir. You were too innocent and when you see people just complain, oh, my father could not afford my school fees. What an irresponsible father until the day your own father lost him, a job and you found out for the first time that dinner could not come. And God said, have you now seen that if I don't help a man, it's not just being irresponsible. Your father is responsible. Yet, except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain. Let me tell you this. My father calls me a young man with gray hair. My experiences in life have added to my experience. Added to my age. That's why you see me respect elderly people. I am not stupid. There are some of you here when you see us honor people, you say, what is there? Because your blood is hot. They paid your school fees. They gave you pocket money. You entered 100 level. By the end of 100 level, you have gotten a scholarship. Your result came out 4.5. Your perspective is too innocent to be used. Keep coming. One day something will happen. By the time you graduate and for five years, there's no job. You will now know why people write prayer requests here. For now, you say, ah, what is there about prayer requests every month? It's because everything in your life is paid for. The day your father look at you and say, young man, after this month, as we are clocking 30th of this month, you are packing your load and you are going. And you will think he has an honorarium for you. He will just wave you and say, my old father just did bye bye and I, the same thing I'm doing for you. And for the first day, you will sleep under a tree. That's the day you open your Bible and say, no, I must get this thing. Yes, sir. Don't waste your pain. Some of you would have entered certain anointings by now if only you could look at God through your pain. There is, the Bible says, for we know. The rest may not know, but we know that all things. How many things? Talk to me. Say all things. All things. Work together. Apostle, what kind of life is this? I graduated since 2013. I've been loving God. There's no work now for me. Is it that I don't serve God? Apostle, I love God. I love the things of God. But not one guy in my whole life, there's no gentleman that has come to say, ah, you're a beautiful lady, I want to. Am I cursed? <clears throat> it's because you are becoming a mother of nations, not a wife. And so God is saying, I need you to have the kind of compassion that will be required for a mother of nations. Today I can minister to people because every time I want to be wary, there is always something God can use from my past. People say apostle is humble. I'm not humble. It's a revelation of God that has kept me like that. The moment I want to lift up my head, God just has to show me one vision of one night I could not afford Gary. And he said, where, where is the pride coming from? Your past can help you maintain your glory. Your past has something in it that can help you keep your glory. When you see a man of God blessed and consistent and stable, there is nothing that is natural like that. There are many of you, you will not have listened to God. Every time they talk to you, you are stubborn towards instruction. So God allowed you. And for one year, like the prodigal son, you went away from mentorship and instructions and you saw the casualties that it brought to your life and now god comes back again and says can i now help you and you say lord please i will never leave you again are we together we'll stop here tonight make it part one we have part two there, there there's something very deep that i want to share i'll share with you next week or whenever whenever it is that we have the opportunity listen to me brothers and sisters I made certain covenants with my life at certain seasons of pain not luxury there were things I went through in my life and I vowed to God I said Lord if you ever prosper me I will not let one person die of hunger in my presence I would not have said that if money and all these resources just came cheaply I may be part of those like you people running your mouth at every family irresponsible people look how simple it is to prosper so there are times God can allow you you go through this you pray you fast no door opens so that when he blesses you with 10 naira 
and says give that 10 naira here you don't want people to lick your shoes just because of that there are certain anointings there are people who got certain impartations early in life you see that early in life and it made them proud what is there about this in fact right now i can even show that the power of god will move one two three four and they make all kinds of things mismanagement of the anointing then one day god will leave them and you find out for one year it looked like your heavens were closed you go for a meeting you live there asking did god call me in the midst of your pain god begins to show you the visions of the foolishness and the pride you insulted every man of god because you had more revelation than your local pastor you insulted him all this 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 dull reverend doesn't know anything and god kept watching when that heaven closed towards you God will now say, go and meet that reverend for prayer. He's the one who will open your heavens. And you drag yourself in shame. Like somebody that has finished fighting wrestling. And the reverend looks at you and says, you, I heard you talk nonsense. God said, you better apologize there. When you learn it, like Samson, the anointing comes back again. But this time around, you know the value of the anointing. Because you believe that you, you are too precious, you won't lose it. You kept reading books that ah, this and that happens. The day it left you, you don't need to ask whether it goes again. You learned a lesson by yourself. There are some of us who were very innocent. We insult every mother. You see somebody's mother insult the mother and say, Kai, this woman said this and that. I sat down near her. Ah, she didn't put any perfume. Kai, what kind of a smelly, you know, this koinonia. And God is saying, no problem. It's because you had a father who was a this and that. All of a sudden, another government will come and they won't give him appointments. And your friends will say, ah, where's our jeep now? He said, no jeep again. No. And then when they leave you like the prodigal son, then you come back to your senses. And the next time God gives you a jeep, you don't just say, come and see jeep. You say, come and see God's faithfulness. It will suddenly become God's faithfulness, no longer jeep. We're going to pray tonight i don't know what what pain you may be going through now and you are saying lord if you called me why am i going through this i'm answering you right now lord why is my life like this and god is saying i'm bringing glory you have called me as a kingdom financier lord i've never held fifty thousand of my money and god says i need to teach you that listen let me tell you when God called me into the apostolic ministry, there are few challenges of people I didn't go through. How else do you relate with people? Are we together? There are times people will bless me and God will ask me to sow it. And when I sow it, I'm alone. And I'm saying, God, what is this? Somebody refused to tighten me. I'm tightening my own heavens. Come and you ask me to carry it. And what is that? And it's amazing how God doesn't answer. There are times that God's silence is a training process. It may not be an attack. He's teaching you how to wait. Lord, will you arise? Based on the Bible studies you did, they say if you call him, he is nigh those who call upon him. Yes, it's true. But he's training you. You teach someone how to call God. He's enjoying an express service with God. And you, the tutor, is there under closed heavens and hazy hearing. Lord, what is this? I've been married for five years. No child. Lord, what I mean, what is the meaning of this? You are calling me into ministry and no child. And then God says, prophesy to all the barren women. Ha, ah, God, what embarrassment is this one again? And he says, do it. He's killing the flesh. You may not know, it's not about a child. God can give you a child even in one week. He's killing the flesh. What do you believe about God? It's better to be in error, at least to know I don't believe this. There are people who believe that Jesus is a prophet and that's all. They don't believe he's the savior. It will be easy to save those people because what they believe is clear. Are we together now? There are many believers whose foundational values are vague. Establishing foundational values that reflect your convictions.
people should be able to look at you and in an instant know what you believe it's not by making noise you see let me tell you this and i say it with all honor in the body of christ we talk too much we talk too much yet in the final analysis most of what we say are not our foundational values we talk about kindness we talk about all of these things and yet we don't believe it do you have foundational values any person who does not have foundational values in his life will never be great will never i repeat be great ask any great man in life and destiny part of the secrets of their greatness is that they have been able to create values foundational values what are the principles you have put in your life to support your spiritual growth oh i will grow as the spirit wills you will never grow what have you put tell me clearly what have you put to support your spiritual health what have you put to support your prayer life you see and and, and i don't mean to be sarcastic please if, if i offend you i'm sorry but some of this carelessness have come from an exaggerated communication of the grace message so every time people have to put physical pillars that help them and support them to stand strong they feel guilty because they feel it should be automatic no sir ask any successful person nobody becomes great automatically is that true the people who announced their jump here 270 this they didn't just close their eyes and dreamt and sat down and then stood up they they labored let's respect the sacrifice that creates stability don't just say apostle my prayer life is going down what are your spiritual values that's my question you will never be stable if you don't have values at what point can you punish yourself at what point can you supervise and discipline yourself you are the first mentor of your destiny it is not always about people policing you is there something you can do in your life and say this is not consistent with my values i must be disciplined for this i usually pray every day by so time to so now i slept off i must pay that price in that prayer by having a one full day retreat that's discipline you don't allow weak people fool you and make your spiritual life go down you need tenacity and energy and discipline are we together values i will never come here for koinonia and be stranded of what to preach because there is a value around my life that makes sure that by friday my message is prepared i look at it it's not automatic tomorrow i'm in zamfara tuesday i'm in lagos coming back for the retreat all of these programs these are major conferences how do you prepare them and then you have to sleep and then you have to do other things is the reason why many believers are not balanced in their life they don't have values you get up anytime you sleep anytime are we together you can go out of your house without plan and not discipline yourself for being that careless you just plan to go and do something in someone's house you end up spending the whole day and you don't do a review to punish yourself for that carelessness it's not it's look do you like what i'm sharing it looks like you don't like what i'm saying you you better like it because this is what makes people great say values shout it again some of us need to create values that govern your going out and coming in not everywhere is goable no sir My friend has birthday somewhere. Is is my friend? Will you die if you don't eat the cake? Can they cut your own and keep for you? We have this 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 carnality that make us believe that until you go and establish your presence everywhere, values. A married man gets up, leaves his house in the morning, returns back by twelve o'clock. And no explanation to the wife and children where did you go to what is your business 
Am I not your husband? No, sir, you are in discipline. No, sir, you are in discipline. If I don't have anything doing outside, you will not find me outside. No way. There's, you see, it's lazy and unserious people that have all the time to spare. Do you know sometimes, in all honesty, I tell you this. Sometimes I sit down by morning and before I finish preparing all my, it's already evening. And I'm wondering, my God, it's already 10. I can be in a, in a position from morning till, maybe I'll just get up to ease myself or do something. Values. I'm going to have the devotion. What time? There's no time. So there's no system of creating discipline. You get up by 5 o'clock, but you don't have a value in your life for when to seek God. I, I, are you getting what I'm saying now? Even the reading of the Bible, there is no system. You just say, okay, today, guy, okay. 1 Kings 13. No. This, I don't want anything that will scare me. Where is Psalms? Psalms for his message. You look for a simple four verse Psalms and just read and wonder why you are not growing. Why should you be surprised that you are not growing? How many of you have seen some of these evangelists that preach in the park? If they sometimes six in the morning they are there, they will do it for more than 20 years. Early in the morning, as soon as you are traveling, you will see them there. They are preaching. Do you have values for your life? Many of us are not bad, but we are receiving the result of bad people because our values have not edited our lives enough to allow good things come to us. Are we together? One of our dear ladies was, was, was sharing and, and sent me a text today about some, some people that stay in, in their compound or so, smoking all kinds of things and harassing them. I said, look, if nothing is done here, find a place immediately. We'll support you to find a place and get out of that place. Are you that desperate for your growth and your destiny? Have values. Have values towards money. Have values that govern your character. Compromise. You can tell yourself, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace. Anytime I see a great man, I will never beg him for money. It's a value. I will find out from him. If he blesses me, that's all right. So if you see a multi-millionaire come, your values. Are you seeing that now? There is that each, but your values. But there are others, as soon as they, ah, your boys are here, you see, you don't have values. And anybody that does not have a, a spirit that does not have control is like a city without walls. Many believers are not stable because we lack values. You cannot define what are the values that I live by. It's better to be sincerely wrong, but at least that you set values. I have a value. I have a spiritual value over the man I can marry. Or the man I can go out with. Or the woman I can go out with. When you see a lady that loves God with all her heart. You know, sometimes it doesn't cease to surprise me. And then with all the spirituality. Here comes this, this uh, uh, brother that, that is, is not. You know that this guy is far from the cross. He's even far from, uh, what's the name of that place where Jesus died? Golgotha. Far from it. And here comes the lady smiling and asking whether it's the will of God. The situation there is lack of values. If you have values, you already know. I can't be this selfish. Children are going to come from this union. And I'm going to submit to this man. I don't want a man that will make me bring forth children whose destinies will be destroyed. If you are honest and you are serious, you will think about your children, not just yourself. It's not all about my, I love you, I love you, my comfort. You are thinking, children will come from this. What if I start praying with my children and the man comes and says, no prayer in this house. What happens to you? We now begin to blame God. Say values. What of friends? What is your standard for having friends in your life? 
There are married people who have bad friends, ungodly friends that keep causing trouble for their homes. Are we together? Values. Spiritual values. What is the parameter that qualifies a man to have access to your mind? Or do you just listen to everybody just because they are talking? What must be present in a preacher for you to listen? What of finance? Some of us don't have values at all. We lie anyhow and it doesn't matter. Me, I'm both old and new school. I've told you, depending on what is old and depending on what is new, there are things we call old school that is just, is, is very new, is latest school. Just because it's ancient does not mean it's outdated. Let's be careful when we define some of these parameters that continue to destroy our lives. Some of us love God, but when it comes to, let me bring money out. When it comes to money, Look up, please. Christians, look up. When it comes to money, you are praying in tongues. Someone just says, uh, go and buy me polish. How much is polish? Let's say 200 naira. Just because you saw the money, God goes places because money has entered your hand. Just because the person does not ask you for change, you will come and drop the polish. And go away with the change. You don't have values. How about this big man? What will he do with 50 naira? Is it your money? Is it your money, sir? You know, once in a while, the Bible said, Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So once in a while, God just draws this thing out to just straighten our lives. Some of you think these things are silly. Are we together now? What is your value to regulate your social media, whatever? What is watchable and what is not watchable? Don't say I'm an adult. You have a mind. <laughs> right now we expose our little children to things they should not watch. And they ask us questions we cannot answer. Are we together? Values. I'm giving you an assignment tonight that when you go back, please spell out very clearly what do I stand for and what do I not stand for with respect to God and with respect to my destiny. Some of you have done well having values for your spiritual life, but you have not done well for your destiny. You don't have values that govern your destiny. In the name of Jesus, I will never be lazy. Whatever it will take, I will do well value in one minute i'd like you to cry to god and say lord have mercy upon me and give me the grace to have values and boundaries in my life lift your voice and pray are you praying it's a hard message but it will bless you lift your voice lord i have tolerated laziness in my life lord i've tolerated carelessness in my life Lord, I've tolerated all kinds of, of things that should not be in my life. I've tolerated pride. Lord, I, I declare I want to go far in life. Please pray. You're not praying. Pray. Oh, apostle, but I'm all right. I'm holy. I don't sleep around. I don't drink. I don't smoke. What of the values of character? The values of empathy. Please pray. It's the reason why some of us have never risen. You have never seen a need to discipline yourself because of carelessness. You must be able to have a way to say, sit down. This is not right. This is good. I have to discipline myself. I spoke rudely. No, one of my values is honor. I was out, I lost my temper and I spoke rudely. I demand if without supervision. Lord, I receive grace to supervise myself. I receive grace. I receive grace. Are you praying? I receive grace. Shalabakata brada kete baladaba. Jakate kata barakato kata. 
spiritual values intellectual values that i will never go to bed till i've added something to my mind is a covenant that you make with yourself it's a core value no matter how sleepy you are you wake up and you say i must improve myself every day by self-supervision you are a pastor by thursday or friday every message to preach must be ready no matter what it is guiding principles If I finish eating, I must wash the plate there and then. Every day, I must sweep my house, whether it is clean or not. Guiding principles. When I get up in the morning, the first thing I would do is play worship and read my Bible before browsing, before watching a movie. Values. There must be boundaries in your life. I'm a music minister. If I wake up every morning, I must rehearse. No day will go without me rehearsing because I'm going far. I want the nations to bless me. As a man of God, I must pray at least in tongues one hour every day, two hours, whether I like it or not. It has nothing to do with whether I'm strong or not strong. I may be sleeping, I will carry my mattress outside. That one hour, I must cover it. I will put an alarm clock and pray. I must study five chapters every day one chapter every day come what may i discipline myself please pray lord help me to set values in my life i'm tired of living my life anyhow praying anyhow visiting friends anyhow watching anything anyhow there has to be boundaries in my life that coordinate me for the purpose of greatness he says every man that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully you will never be great being careless hallelujah listen listen there are people here the last time they read a book was last year the last time they read a book was last year you buy all kinds of books and pile them and continue to lie to yourself and others that you have so many books and then there's someone that reads one book per week look let me tell you please god is not unjust if you are not willing to do this thing right it will not work are we together there are many preachers that sees what god is doing in, in some of our lives and get angry they don't know the sacrifice these are my boys that work for me ask them i i don't think i have ever gone to bed not not in the last i don't know the last time i cannot remember the last time i went to bed earlier than 12 midnight not for any reason even if i have a flight to catch in the morning please let's not mock ourselves they say uneasy lies the head that wears the crown if you are not willing to pay the price don't insult those getting the result because god is just he's rich unto all are we together an average message anybody that is serious an average message takes hours to prepare you don't want to know how many materials are consulted for just one simple message as you call it What of the prayer on it? Oh Lord, bless your people. Oh Lord, increase your people. A friend was trying to call me this morning. I told him I'm praying. I will call you when I finish. I finished around afternoon and I called him. He said, since that time? And I told him, I said, what do you think the anointing is? A charm? What do you think the anointing is? A charm? I considered getting a chef years ago. But I said getting a chef will be a waste of time. How many times do I eat in a day? I would just be giving free money to some and cooking food and wasting it. But how many times do you eat in a day? Four times in the morning, between morning and 12. <laughs> Another five times. 
Someone has to really tell you the price of greatness so that you will see and know. And if it's too scary for you to get there, then respect the person who gets there. Because we have this honor for success in this nation. We see people pay such huge price and we trivialize it as though they were just lucky. You are just lucky to be anointed. You are just lucky to have a crowd. You are just lucky. It's just that God just gave you intelligence. There is a price. Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost, but he still went about. He went about. It was the doing good that was the anointing. The going about was his strength. He went about. That's why many people have a lot of spare time, no values. They sit down morning till night gossiping, more talking about politics. Then they move to men of God. Then they move to farmers. Then they move to what is happening in the north. Then they move to Boko Haram. It's five, ah, no food today. And that's how they spend their day. And before you know it, there are children around you asking you questions. Mommy, why are we like this? He says, the will of God. No, sir, it's not the will of God. If you are a man of God here and your life is not on fire, there is an explanation. Don't you ever say it is the will of God. Find out the price it takes to be great. There is a price. You want to be stable in your spiritual life? The price is establishing foundational values. There are things I must do every day, no matter what happens. It doesn't matter whether we are fasting. It doesn't matter whether there is koinonia. It doesn't matter whether I'm traveling the whole day. If for any reason I miss it, I'll be lying to tell you I get it 100 over 100. But if I don't get it, I pay that price. I will pay that price. If I have a time for prayer and for any reason, I'm a night person because I like, I like a lot of, um, it's been like that, the way God trained me. Most of my prayer is in the night. You can live with me for one year and except God chooses to, you may never, maybe it's just the sound you may hear, but you may never really catch me. You will think I don't pray because I love the night. Everything that can distract has gone. <laughs> I off the light and pray with all my heart. I don't pray and then I check phone and quickly say a message has come. That's not prayer. You are playing. You put your heart in this thing. Do you know the spirits that attack you when you are about to be great? Do you know the level of attack per day that comes upon a man of God? You don't want to know. It's more than just good preaching, my brothers and my sisters. Please, I want you to make up your mind. I don't want to dwell here. We'll, we'll move to other things. But make up your mind that you are going to have values. There are friends, you've heard me say it. Send them a text and say, my brother, I found out that every morning, 6 o'clock, you come and wake me and you sit down. I don't mean to offend you, but please, don't be offended if I don't open the door for you again. There are there are people in the name of friends. I'm not, relationships are important. But there are friends that are not godly at all. Six o'clock, they have knocked your door. Some are even Christians. Bros, how are you there now? You collected that movie, right? And you want to pray. But you are too, many of you don't like feeling bad. Some of us who are already used to persecution, we already, we have gotten the whole thing. But some of you want a good name, even at the expense of your spiritual life. I don't want anybody to say anything wrong about me. And someone comes to your house. You are praying. You stop the prayer. You close the Bible. And then you slot the, the movie. And the person is just, he's there till one o'clock. Invites his friend the next day. And then the third friend they invite is a smoker. Who does not respect you or your values. You come into a house. You are seeing the picture of a dove. You are seeing the picture of Jesus. You are seeing the picture of a, a poster. It shall be well. And you still sit down with cigarette. Shamelessly. But you are afraid. If I drive this one now. May God give you courage to send them out quickly. Don't let anybody call you at the fruitful part of your day. Just call you. Where are you? I'm in the office. Ah, what are you doing? I just thought about you. Oh, God bless you. Thank you. I'll call you later. No, no, no. I want to talk now. There's G's, G's day. That's why we never become great. We don't know that this thing keeps adding. God is a just God. You don't
don't sit down and cross your legs around and then you want God to keep sending you nations. No. I returned back yesterday by evening. As soon as I returned, removed my clothes, I didn't even rest. I got straight to work. I don't know what time I slept this morning. I woke up later. I, I slept maybe around... It, it shouldn't be earlier than 4.30. And by 10, I was awake. Till now. My eyes touching the bed to sleep again maybe at least three o'clock in the morning yet i have a ministration in zamfara do you love your destiny that much or are you just singing songs about it behind everything that works is someone making it work did you hear what i said behind everything that works is someone making it work it doesn't mean I don't joke. It doesn't mean I'm, I'm an antisocial person. But there are people who at the level you are in life, you don't have the luxury for play. I can decide to take a whole day off to relax. I think I, 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 I've, I've worked enough to merit it. But somebody that is just starting in life, say apostle is resting, you too, you are resting. We only rest on the seventh day. And on the seventh day, God rested. You are resting on day one. It's an error. He said, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. For the night cometh, cometh, when no man will walk again. Please sit down. God bless you. Thank you, promise. So the second key to creating a st stability in your life is to establish foundational values. An attack on your values is an attack on your destiny. Satan does not attack you by attacking you. He attacks you by attacking your values. Number three. Let's hurry up for the sake of time. Mm. What is the third key to creating stability in your work with God? Receiving the ministry of the body. The third key. You want stability in your Christian life. You must receive the ministry of the body. We'll have a long reading. First Corinthians chapter 12. We are reading from verse 12 till I ask us to stop. 12 down about 26. Actually the whole text is the, is the entire from 12 to the end. But we'll read down maybe 25, 26. Now please look up. We are creating stability in our lives. We are going to read. For as the body is one and hath many members. Paul is teaching now. And all the members of that one body being many are one body. So also is Christ. Paul is teaching about the body now. Next verse. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles. Another word. Anglicans. Pentecostals. Presbyterian whatever it is whether we be bond or free we have all been made to drink of what one spirit say one spirit it's one of the foundational doctrines the doctrine of baptisms one lord one faith one baptism for the body is not one member but many now paul is teaching something here he's teaching that this body we call is not just one member but many okay if the foot shall say because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? He's asking a question now. And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where then is the hearing? Powerful. Paul is an intelligent man. Imagine if the whole world was koinonia you would think it would be excellent if the whole world were koinonia where will be the miles moon rose that will receive the teaching and the revelation of the kingdom from let me tell you this one of the manifestation of error and pride how you know you have deviated in a way that demands deliverance and repentance is indoctrinating yourself to believe 
that your ministry or your person is a sufficient representation of all that is needed to present the fullness of Christ. Any man, any woman, man of God, businesswoman, whatever, if you ever conceive that thought, it's a sign that your life is under attack. If the whole body were koinonia, where then will be the Benihims, the Kenneth Copelands, the redeemed church, and all these places? My goal is never to make every ministry koinonia. My goal is to contribute my quota as far as the privilege of God's grace has been given to me to supply my own contribution to the overall body. I have said this again and again and again. I thank God for the privilege of balance. I am not a balanced man of God just because I'm independently sound. I'm a balanced man of God because I have a heart that is open to the body. There are dimensions that are not shown me and I never would have seen no matter how close I am with God. But my genuine opening to the body has given me room to be able to look and say, wow, so there is something like this. It's not been captured in my experience. Let me study it. If the whole were hearing, where then is the smelling? All these parts have distinct functions. 18. But now God had set the members, every one of them in the body, as it has placed him. Believers, are you seeing this now? Your life will never be stable if you are imbalanced doctrinally and we men of god sadly and and very 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 i say it with all due respect because of our individual complexes we carry our complexes that are as a result of our esteem of ourselves and and add our complexes into the context of ministry and make it look like it is God that is me. Imagine that I sit down now. I say, don't listen to any man of God. If any koinonia person listens to any man of God aside from me, you are not being loyal. That's devilish. It's a terrible doctrine. I have a responsibility to guide you. I have a responsibility to teach you. I have a responsibility to mentor you. Is that true? But never to sit down and lie to myself and lie to you that in myself as Joshua Selman, I contain all the dimensions that are in God. I travel around and I see dimensions in God that sometimes I stand I say, wow, this is amazing. And I sit down to learn, my God, I never knew this. It's the reason why I love the body of Christ. Don't carry that bias that just because it is not your church or it is not your pastor, every other person who is not you is a devil. And many men of God, we are victims of this. And the danger is that we are subconsciously raising people after that paradigm. We're talking about the church in Nigeria. I think it was with Ejimi some, some weeks, remember? And we're discussing and, and I was sharing with him how this button of ministry came down right from the Samuel Ajayi crowders and I was just showing him the spiritual history of the church in Nigeria to this present time celebrate the body we are perfect as a body as individuals we may have our own limitations we have our own pride and prejudices and immaturity here and flesh here and imperfections here. I know, I understand. Our levels of alignment to the spirit are not the same. Our levels of hunger and passion for God is not the same. So the results will not be the same. However, however, it matters. I was living, I was living Asaba yesterday and there was a dear man of God. He was part of the people that came. I was already late, hurrying to go and catch the flight. And then he requested that I just come step my feet in his church and pray. I don't know him from anywhere. And I said, oh dear, this man, let me do my best and at least stand and pray for him. I know what God has put in my own life. I know what will happen to his church when I pray for him. So it's not just because I am anointed. I know that his church will never be the same. You see that? One of the reasons why I love Dr. Miles Monroe, you hear me talk about him so much, 
not just because he's the one who mentored me in the area of the kingdom but when i started out in life and ministry i wrote letters to several men of god now i'm not offended i'm not saying they are bad because you write a letter to me i may not even get it it's, it's not the best but i mean i do my best to make myself accessible but sometimes it's just not possible so i totally understand it's not from a standpoint of sarcasm i wrote letters to several people several ministers just telling them my encounters and just trying to leverage on them to make sense of my life for me and among there were different versions of replies i believe but miles munro wrote me handwritten handwritten and encouraged me and shared certain things signed it with his own signature and sent it from bahamas to zaria and i got it i said lord i want to be like this man whatever will make a busy man like this the largest church in bahamas a pastor of pastors an advisor of presidents to have the time to send to a young guy trying to gain his balance spiritually that's the reason why all these prayer groups and fellowships and the young people some of you here every time they come and say apostle this is what we are doing it doesn't matter whether they are in error or not i love them and i embrace them because when i was at that level there was no one close enough everybody who could listen were too far and then they continue to say young boys are rebellious but who is the person that can listen and can pat their back there is no group and no association and no group of gentlemen and women that i will not love them and hug them if there is something that needs correction i'll say adjust this 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 and just love them and bless them i made up my mind that as god lifts me i will never be too far that i cannot bless and help the people coming you must receive of the body and if they were all one member where were the body we're reading to verse 26 let's hurry up but now are they many members yet but one body everybody say one body say it one body many members and the eye cannot say unto the hand i have no need of thee nor again the head to the feet i have no need imagine if God started doing all those encounters, producing dramatic encounters, I was seeing the saints of old, having visions with them. Yet I was poor, I was broke, and everything I did was poor and was broke. Imagine if those anointed in the body to supply that dimension, I rejected them. That rejection would have reflected in ministry today. It would be an anointed ministry with baskets all around forcing both your neck and your hand to cough out every money in your pocket today we are able to walk in this level of integrity by the grace of god because we have received the supply of those dimensions i never started my journey with god knowing anything about finance it was the spirit life encounters visions dreams the word prayer faith i mean everything just throw yourself spiritually anything that had to do with excellence administration leadership i didn't know anything about it but bless god for the body bless god for the body nay much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary there are ministries in the body that are not on tv there are ministries in the body that are hidden and silent and the bible says those ministries are also important and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable everybody say less honorable say it again less honorable look up please this bottle of water was kept by someone imagine that your assignment on earth is to always keep water for joshua selman you will look and think that just because this is not is not you are not shining so you see the guy who is holding the mic and preaching and talking 
I'm shouting right now. And somebody is falling under the anointing outside. And say, wow, this guy. We can think based on human parameters and our ways of measuring things that the person who is doing this ministry is of lesser honor. No. Hear what the Bible says. Upon this we bestow more abundant honor and our uncomely parts have more what? Abundant comeliness. That means your heart that you cannot see can stop your leg that you can see from walking. Your brain that you cannot see have you seen a madman whose body is complete yet he's mad because something that should not be touched in his head was touched say amen. amen just because one one molar has a problem an adult it will force your eyes to shed tears it will force your legs to run around because you are worried just because one tiny teeth has a problem that means there are ministries we are ignoring in the body. What this woman who has just a small prayer house, she just prays for people and writes the names of men of God. Let's leave this sofa head woman. Let's go to Koinonia where things are happening. And you leave the woman. Whereas you don't know Joshua Selman is standing today because that woman is kneeling down. You see that? Oh Lord, help him. Let the revelation be fresh upon him. Lord, help him. There are people who pray for me as a ministry. I'm not talking, they, they believe they are called by God. Thank God for the prayer department. But there are people, I know some of them, they believe that their assignment in life is to intercede for me. And I don't joke with those people. When people send me a text and say, Apostle, I just prayed for you. No matter how busy, I, I do my best to at least, if I cannot sow into their lives, I cannot pray for them. Or I pray back for them or just try to do something to make them um, feel honored for what they have done. 24. For our comely parts, sensitive parts, have no need. But God had tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which, which lacked. 25 that there should be no chism in the body but that the members should have the same care one for another prayer ministry care for the prosperity ministry prophetic ministry care for the apostolic ministry are we together leadership ministry care for the man of god who all he knows is how to heal the sick and preach he doesn't know how to put an excellent organogram make your ministry available provided he's ready to receive it the bible says but as many as received him meaning he can be rejected there are churches you go to you see the power of god but there's a lot of misbehavior i can be preaching now sam come i can be preaching and a member will just run and come and touch my head and go back to sit down what kind of indiscipline is that are we together all in the name of excitement no the house of god is not a, a cinema uh, uh, hall neither is it a place for movies and circles it's a place where lives are changed when you see that it doesn't stop the power of god from flowing but you will know that a dimension of the ministry of the body has not been received or some i'm preaching and someone squeezes one thousand naira and throws it to me is that how to sow is that how you sow corn <laughs> you sow corn with respect and dignity ask any farmer you throw maize like that you don't come after four months to get a harvest Say in the name of Jesus, I receive the ministry of the body of Christ. Say in the name of Jesus, I love the body of Christ. And I receive the diverse ministries of the body. Let me advise every man of God here, you are a pastor, you are a spiritual leader of any sort. Never use your pulpit as a platform to tear another man's ministry i repeat never use your pulpit as a platform to tear another man's ministry because you are sowing a seed that will grow must grow 
I don't want anybody talking against me and talking against anybody serving here. And I will not sow that seed. I will challenge wrong doctrines, but I will never find myself stand and tear down. See, imagine for instance, um, um, just come Sam. Imagine, come. Imagine that these guys are laboring and doing their work. And just because of one or two mistakes in their lives, I just come and push everybody aside to show that I am Joshua Selman. I'm destroying them. What does this guy go and tell his wife? Our ministry is going down. Why? Joshua Selman tore down your ministry. This guy. I tear people down and I stand. You don't have to cut the head of people to show you are tall. If you are tall, you are tall. Please, I want you to learn this. That in the name of Jesus, you will zip your mouth from talking against men of God, talking against their wives, talking against churches. Don't do that. Are we together now? Don't go around, ah, this man of God's wife, this man of God, this one. Now, we are not perfect people in ourselves. It's true. And different ministries have their different dimensions of God. Uh, and there are the truth is that there are things to correct in almost every ministry there is something to adjust there is something to correct so the observations may be justifiable but it's still not enough reason to tear people i have preached everywhere from anglican to catholic to cherubim and seraphim to um presbyterian equa coking pentecostal i mean just name it i'm for the body I love you. I never show any, where are you? Are you for who? Are you for us or no? I would not do that devilish thing. In this ministry, there are people who are a, a product of different churches and different places. Now, let me tell you this. You don't have to agree with a man or a doctrine to love. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It, just because I accept the body does not mean I accept every doctrine. There are doctrines that are obviously wrong. I have my convictions. There are doctrines that you will never hear from this pulpit. Because as far as the responsibility of your spiritual growth as given to me under God is concerned, I will do my best to present to you the most accurate and balanced portrait of spiritual truth. However, I will not just go and meet someone who maybe has a problem with the baptism of the Holy Spirit or has a problem with deliverance, or has a problem with healing, and then fight the person. Don't make that happen. This is one of the mistakes that I see happening, especially among younger ministers, because we are all young. Younger ministers. Sometimes I look at them and I see them training themselves to resent. Oh, you are Anglican. No, I won't. I'm serious with God. You are what? You are from... Mm, don't do that. I love people regardless of if I don't agree with you on many grounds when we meet we discuss the areas we agree we agree about the growth of Nigeria we agree about the fact that this country must go places we agree about the fact that the poor and the needy need help these are areas that we agree on why bring a sensitive and touchy area It's one wisdom key you may receive when you are in the midst of people who don't exactly agree with you, be careful. You may want to bring subjects that are generally agreeable. Are we together? Is God speaking to us? Thank you, guys. Say, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to receive the ministry of the body. I'm a product of many anointings. And by the grace of God, these anointings have contributed to making my life what it is today. When I travel to different places and people try to honor me as against other preachers in that land, I, I come against that, that honor immediately. Don't do that. Don't honor me at the expense of other men of God. I've shared with you my story, 
how that once upon a time I traveled to a particular place for administration and um, the media people or so came to do an interview for me. And you know, they were making it look like the men of God in the city were just doing nonsense. Now that apostle has come, I said, no, 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 don't do that. I have only come as a contributor to strengthen the hands of the men and the women there. Imagine how healing it will be for you as a pastor when you hear another pastor say, I've come to strengthen your hands. Years ago, when we wanted to organize a crusade uh, in, 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 in Massacre, I remember when the pastors were doing, you know, I was presenting it before the PFN there. Many of the pastors were feeling, look, they said, some of them said, if you are coming to open a church, just say it. Because many people have done what you have done. They will come and say crusade. We will labor and give our speakers. As soon as they finish, they just appoint your keyboard. This is now your usher. The other person is now a prayer band member. You just share people's members. Say, just tell us. And I laughed. I said, no, I'm for the body. I don't hate the body. And that's what we did there. Throughout that crusade, it was honor for the body all through. Praise the Lord. You must love the body of Christ. I love Equa, I love Kokin, I love Baptist, I love Living Faith, I love MFM, and name them. I love everyone. For as long as there is one person in that circle that names the name of the Lord, regardless of the individual imbalances, if God were to walk just on our perfection, then all of us will not have a ministry. Every house, in a great house, regardless of the vessels, the house is still great. Are we together? God bless you. Number four. The fourth key to creating stability in your work with God is to engage the practice of personal retreats. Hmm. The practice engage the practice of personal retreats personal retreats take my body my soul my spirit breathe on me Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. You are the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place, take your place, take your place. Mm. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 28. We're reading to 31. The grand secret. Of spiritual stamina the practice of retreats a retreat is a time I think um, what's the message now it should have been the last message for last year let me tell you this it's a shame and I'm very disappointed in this ministry if you are a worker and you are a faithful member in this ministry and we call some sermons and you look as if you are not aware it's a sign that you are not serious with God Quite honestly. Are we together? There are messages that must be in your archive. Because life will make you demand them. Retreats. Retreats. A retreat is a time away from your normal activity. A time set apart to seek the Lord. To spend time with the Lord. Retreats are times of personal appraisals. Retreats are times of correction. Retreats are times of empowerment. Her 
Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard? The creator of the ends of the earth fainted not. So the Bible is talking about fainting here. It says, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Next verse. He giveth what? Please talk to me, Koinonia. He giveth power. That means when people faint, what do they lack? Power. The spiritual capacity to stand. He giveth power to the faith. And to them that have no might, he increased strength. That means there is a reason why people go down. Power is missing. Strength is missing. It says that if you turn aside in the day of battle, your strength is small. There is a way life can push you that will force you to turn aside. You need a retreat. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. Next verse. But they that wait upon the Lord. To wait upon the Lord is not just to fast. You can fast and sleep. You are not waiting upon the Lord. Hello? To wait upon the Lord demands seriousness and intention. The best way to wait upon the Lord is to fast. But even if you eat, eat light enough to allow your spirit. There is, there is a relationship between the busyness of your mind and food. Once you have choked yourself with food, even, even medical people tell us, by the time you eat, I mean, if you take a lot of food, you find out your body begins to hibernate. You want to sleep. So sometimes you will need that space. There are many believers. It's amazing. As far as I'm concerned, and now I, I, I stand to be corrected, but a Christian who does not fast is not a serious Christian. I'm not talking of a special corporate fast. There is no week in my life I don't fast. Impossible. Impossible. As impossible as saying Satan died for my sins. Are we together? Could it be that your belly is the reason why your destiny is closed? Yes, sir. Could it be that you have not held on to the four horns of the altar in a retreat? There are men who have not encountered true power because they are not ready for it. When you get angry with life, that door will open. No. It's just that many people are too casual about life. Lord, why is my destiny locked left, right, and center? You close the door. No food. If God can grant you the grace, no water. You stay there. You lock the door. Lord, you have anointed me as a man of God. What is happening? My church is not growing. My life is not growing. Lord, something is wrong. What is wrong with my music ministry? Nobody is placing demand on my grace. While people are sleeping in the night, you are rolling from left to right praying. Tears coming out of your eyes. You are crying your destiny with passion. Lord, open the gates of my destiny. I'm the firstborn. I'm the lastborn out of 15 people. 30 people in my lineage. Nobody has risen. There has to be a way out. What is that yoke, oh God? Why... Why is it that 11 ladies married in my lineage? None of them has joy. Zakatos kapata. He said, bring forth your strong reasons. Believers don't pray. Believers don't get angry enough. There is what we call holy anger. It's true. That you just sit down somewhere and say, Lord, something is wrong. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. Our only brother that got a job died two months my sister married a rich man she died with the man lord what is wrong there has to be an explanation you sent an angel to come and give daniel understanding where is that angel he must come and meet me in this room you are praying there is a way you can be angry sleep will not near you You organize vigils now in two hours people are sleeping 
and sometimes it's even the pastors that are sleeping what sort of indiscipline is that how many hours is a vigil yet the same person can stand by the road and talking for the same time for the vigil it's a spirit slumber is a spirit pray inquiry prayers Lord everything I put my hand in doesn't work I entered five relationships in one year they all died what is all this someone said you will give me a job it didn't work Lord render heaven speak to me I need an explanation when Job called upon the name of the Lord and he meant business God came He said, open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things. Let me tell you this. If you want to rise in life, I want to give you a very big advice. It's not a doctrine. Please maximize your night times. I repeat, maximize your night times. Only weak people snore their entire life through the night. The night is when destiny, destiny things, shift things in the spirit ask the doctors most patients die in the night you are at a sensitive period in your life you need to be serious it doesn't have to be a departmental retreat lord a three-day fast i need to find answers i need to find answers off your phone remove the battery and throw it and keep it somewhere don't let that addiction will you die if you don't own your phone for three days will you die if you are not on social media we make it look as if these things if we off them we will die what if they steal the phone and for one week you don't have a phone and you get down on your knees lord is me and you here no friend no koinonia no apostle you, if you have the resources and God grants you grace, you can go to one of these quiet hotels somewhere. Just book a room, 5,000. And close yourself there. Lord, you have said many things about my life. I'm tired of confusion. Lord, I'm tired. I believed this last week. Now, I don't even know what I believed again. I just finished a series on deliverance. And now, I'm even doubting the whole deliverance thing again. Lord, you have to help me. And you pray. Let me tell you. God comes when we take him serious. Did you hear what I said? God comes when we take him serious. For as long as you play games with God, you will never have him come. There is a mystery to an encounter. You must give it a life and death seriousness. When Koinonia was going to start, three days before Koinonia, or, or thereabout, before Koinonia would start, I went on a retreat. Jakatokabada. Lord, everything that I've put, the blueprint you revealed to me, is it intact? And if God ever spoke to me and said, this koinonia thing, you're on your own, I will close it. I never do anything in this ministry and in my life, a major decision without taking out time to pray. You ask the leaders, they know. Sometimes we will discuss something and they just come back the next few weeks and they find me keep quiet over it. If I keep quiet over an issue God has not spoken, I would die there until his voice comes. We don't respect the voice of God. That's why we continue to move in circles in our lives. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple with your presence. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Yes. Fill this temple with your presence. I wait on you. Lord, I wait on you. I wait on you. Lord, I wait. Sing it one more time from your heart. I wait on you. 
to make a serious decision in your life who to marry and all you are doing is browsing Facebook you are about to marry a devil you want to relocate from Nigeria or abroad and you think it's not a reason for a retreat should I move should I do and you browse advantages of staying in Nigeria Google enter that's your destiny we are talking about there are defining moments please hear me not every decision in your life is equally important lord should i start a church or continue like this you don't make that kind of decision sitting down and drinking coffee you lock yourself and say flesh give way i need to hear something for the destiny of millions fasting does not kill a vigil does not kill my brothers and my sisters conquer spiritual laziness and receive the grace to stay until something comes upon your life lord my ministry is not stable men are coming in men are going out what is all this today we have 10 members tomorrow we have 20 members and the holy ghost comes to you and says son there is a level of power and grace you need they will not come and sit down for nothing and you stay there one hour becomes two hours and the spirit of god is watching your seriousness two hours become three hours and the holy ghost says this lady is not joking i have seen there is a boundary you cross in prayer that even god knows you are no longer joking you are praying praying from your heart lord you have called me into a ministry of signs and wonders where are the evidences why is my life barren why do i stand to minister and the word of god is not coming with fire what could be wrong oh god i have read every book i have listened to every man of god and all of a sudden he comes with his glory and says my son there is a way ministry is done it's a revelation you hear every great man tell you of their encounters run away from a man who does not have an encounter of the secret place you don't copy everything there are things you must get by yourself in the secret place we were preparing we are going to pray shortly before koinonia will start you know i was already sensing in my spirit okay maybe let's go and start ministry in abuja or somewhere there or just or whatever it is you know koinonia was already on and i just sensed in my spirit and then i was having a retreat towards the end of the year and i just prayed and prayed and slept i didn't even know i had slept and all of a sudden i had a dream and in that dream i saw a plane lift and on that plane it was written e and i it was leaving zaria to abuja listen just when it was about to land in abuja it crashed when i got up i said lord i get the message the time has not come i would have stupidly gotten up just because somebody wants to sponsor you does not mean god is in it please hear me the times we live in require keenness of sensitivity one brutal mistake you make can destroy your testimony forever i would have done that now and you would have been surprised what have you taken for granted in your life a gentleman said he likes you you didn't pray you just smiled i think he's the one even samuel saw eliab and said surely this is the lord's anointed god said no 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 if you love god and you want to go far please get this message and listen to it you become stable in life when you practice retreats periodically there are times i go for retreats and i say lord am i are the messages i'm preaching in koinonia is it consistent am i am i leading the people in the right way and god tells me sometimes you see me tell you that god gave me messages here messages most of these messages you see commanding results that they talk about and all of this 
the names, the lifter of men. That message has blessed. I was lying down on the bed praying. And the next thing I saw on my pillow, the lifter of men. That's how I saw the message. You would think people are lying if you are not a man of the secret place. Please, we are spending too much hour of our life in the open. A great man of God, most of your life should be indoors. You are preparing for an extraordinary life. Sister, God has told you you are going to marry a great man of God. Cat walking around is not going to bring you the marriage. You go back. You are praying and building your spirit. To carry the load of ministry is not, it's not a wheelbarrow. You are pushing. You are carrying destinies on your head. There are many of us, because you don't have the spiritual stamina for the level you are praying for, God will never take you there. He will take you there and you can die in one month because of the kind of attack and persecution that comes at that level. There are even finances. This prosperity thing you see is warfare. Prosperity is warfare. Oh God, make me a millionaire. And God says, son, you are too innocent. You don't know the attack that happens when you have money. Is God speaking to us? This message is calling us a restoration back to retreats. Some of you, you have not had any retreat this year. Next week is our workers retreat. Thank God. But much more than a workers retreat. Let me tell you the truth. If there is anyone who has been connected to this ministry for a while and you cannot go on a personal retreat, you are not growing. You are not growing no matter how busy you think you are. You may not have the money to book a hotel or a place. And by hotel, you don't book a hotel where they are playing music in the night and clubbing. You have, you have, you have, you have ruined the whole retreat. Find a place alone. Walk around. Oh God, show me what am I not getting well? What am I getting? And you are walking and talking like a madman. You think you are talking alone. One hour, you are talking by yourself. This is what will happen. Lord, this ministry you are giving me, this anointing, this healing anointing, and you stand and the power of imagination begins to come. You are standing and seeing yourself ministry, and you are sensing a time will come, the climate starts to shift. His majesty is coming. Make way for him. All of a sudden, he can come there. Two, three hours, you may not know what is happening until the next time you hold a mic. When you hold a mic, you will see the fruit of your retreat ordinary praise the lord you are going to see people getting healed and you say what is this like the gentleman who was saying you don't just speak and the power of god touches people god is not a magician you can fake power you can't fake his presence you can borrow revelations here and there you must have a track record are you ready to pray our time is gone find a corner for yourself in the next five minutes we are going to blast in the spirit instrumentalists help us we are going to pray just find a place alone for god's sake with god cry your heart this night to god and say father something is wrong i need stability in my life lift your voice and pray Mandas Katapa Hasanamakata, Shekete Ketekete, Embra Katosko Parakapo Shekete, Nante Kaskoma Tande Shemekata. There is something wrong, oh God. I don't have a personal encounter with you. Help me, oh God. Today I think I'm born again. Tomorrow I'm not sure again. I need a personal encounter. Pray. Shamalakato Shabaka. Embrakos kopeke dos kela katos sekete kete kete embreke dos shoto kata maria kata le kata bas kada barato sanaga pray shekelela labos manta brakatos kepeko dos sekete le kete brakatos kabara kata embretes kata bara katos sekete kete kete rakato koto brekete give me a personal encounter. A personal encounter, a personal encounter in the name of Jesus. Pray. Shop 
Barakatos. Legeta Kato Bakata. Pray, pray outside. Make sure you are praying. You are following online. Pray. Zekoto Koto Brekete Kenekos. Embrekete Ketekata. Sakatoska Brakatosiata. Lord, restore my values. Restore my foundational values. Restore my foundational values. Restore it. The values I kept when I started with you. The values I kept when you started using me. The values I kept when the anointing started coming upon my life. The values I kept that gave me revelation, influence. Restore, O oh God. Restore, O oh God. Restore, O oh God. Abrakato sekete, embrekato shkada barakato sekada bash, nakata brakata. You are a man of God here. Pray, pray, Lord. What am I missing? Pray, Lord. What am I missing? What has my growth in the spirit taken from my life? What am I missing? What about prayer am I missing? What about fasting am I missing? What about the study of the word am I missing? What about character am I missing? Hallelujah. You are going to pray and say, Father, destroy my life. Anything that will stop me from getting to my place of destiny, lift your voice and cry. Trust circumcision. Hold on to the, the horns of the altar. Pray. Pray. Take it from me, oh God. That this destiny of beauty and glory will emerge. Circumcise me, oh God. With the circumcision of the spirit. Circumcise my ministry. Circumcise my voice. Circumcise the anointing upon my life. Manta Tosca Baracata, Eke Tosca Baracatos Ketekedia, Shapras Katamba Sekete, Cut away the flesh, Cut away the flesh, Cut away the flesh, Cut away pride, Cut away loss, Cut away pride, Cut away loss, Cut away the flesh until your glory is seen in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point for tonight, and then we are done. Listen, hold on. There are many things in terms of the supplies of heaven that must reach a believer to add to his stability. The truth is that when your finances is going wrong it can affect your stability are we together there are many of our beloved sisters who would have loved god and sat down properly to hear god for their lives but because of the need of their families they are out trying to look for anybody that has the means even if it's not the will of god there are some of you gentlemen here who cannot settle down for one day because you have a lot of needs financial needs family needs there are some of us we will not dare go for a retreat you wouldn't even imagine it because the devil keeps piling up needs we are going to pray and say lord open heavens over my life whatever must be released over my life to give me rest to seek and serve you lift your voice and pray open heavens oh god open heavens Open heavens, oh God. 
Lord solve this financial issue once and for all so that myself and my wife and my children can call upon your name let me birth this pregnancy the bible says and adam knew his wife and she gave birth to seth and men began again to call upon the name of the lord what do you need to give birth to that will give you the liberty to again begin to call upon the name of the lord open heaven so god open heaven so god help my family lord the cry of my father the cry of my mother the cry of school fees the cry of joy is not allowing me to seek you i prophesy open heavens i declare open heaven the power the powers that fight my possession the powers that fight a release of my blessings that will allow me to serve God. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. Poverty. The Lord rebuke you. Delay. The Lord rebuke you. Failure. The Lord rebuke you. Hallelujah. Just give me one more minute. We are still going to pray this prayer. There are some of you that need to pray. The issue of marriage and children will not let you serve God. When you sit down like this, all that is coming to your mind is marriage. You are going to pray. Lord, let the marriage come and go so that I can. If that's what it needs to give me rest. Some of you is your school fees. Some of you is your education. You sit down and just remember five carryovers. Where do I start from? Are we together? Some of you know favor. You want to go on a retreat. If a call comes from your mother, my daughter, my son, can I get something? And you say, mommy, you have come again. You are going to pray. Satan, the Lord, rebuke you. Release that which God has, re has released already into my life so that it will give me rest. Lift your voice and pray. The purpose of the blessing is to give you rest and peace to serve the Lord. Open your mouth and rebuke Satan. Shakatos. Shakatos. I command a release of that anointing that will give you rest in ministry. That anointing that will give you rest in business. Lord, establish my business so that I can have the time to serve you. Lord, establish me. I'm tired of staying in a rented apartment. This rent issue is affecting my time with you. Give me my own space. Give me my own place. Lord, I'm tired of begging for food. It's not allowing me to walk in integrity. In the name of Jesus, let the heavens be open over my daily bread let it not be a concern again pray Serking al Janna, ya na na. Gashina, gamuna, ya na na. Gashina, gamuna, serking al Janna, ya na na. Gashina, gamuna, ya na na. Sarkin Salakuna Yana Na Yana Na Sarkin Salakuna Yana Na 
Listen. This prayer, you see, that I just gave you. I prayed this prayer for this ministry. Listen. I said, Lord, I don't want to be a man of God that will ever manipulate people in church for finances. I want to be a blessing. I don't want to be the man of God that will hold a basket and stand after service and say, come and drop money. What happens to those who don't have it? But if my needs are not met and there are bills in the ministry, it will force me to do it. Let me tell you this. The Bible says the rod of the wicked, listen, shall not fall upon the lot of the righteous. Why? Lest they dip their hands. There is something that can happen to the righteous that will make them dip their hands in iniquity. That's why sometimes we need to pray and say, Lord, open the heavens fast. Open the heavens fast. So that the pressure of ministry does not get to me and now make me to start lying to people and say what God did not say. Lord, open the heavens fast so that that child will come so that it will not lead me to go and meet a herbalist for a child open the heavens fast oh god so that a husband a wife will come so that i will not have to go and meet someone and do one arrange devilish thing and destroy my life is it all right if you pray that prayer one more time lord open the heavens for the sake of my righteousness for the sake of your grace for the sake of my spiritual life Open the heaven. Open the heaven. Send me help from Zion, oh God. Lord, send me the admission. I don't want to have to do malpractice. Lord, help me graduate. I don't have to call someone to write my exams for me. Lord, give me a job. I don't want to be a prostitute. Lord, I don't want to be an arm robber. I don't want to be a 419 Let your heavens be open. Let me have the resources to take care of my family. hallelujah hallelujah praise the Lord I want you to go back and listen to this message again and vow that you will be stable in your life stability does not just happen there are forces that make it happen and you must cry and align with God to make for those forces to happen and then you will be stable are we together now Lift your hands. I pray for you. In the name that is above all names. The kind of encounter that is needed to keep you for Jesus for life. May you have that encounter. The kind of encounter that can make you stand. That even if you are the only Christian in a family of non-Christians. The encounter is too deep for you to think of going back. I release it upon your life. Amen. Number two, I pray for you. As you go back, may you revisit your foundational values. And for those who do not have, may God grant you the grace to create values. That pertain unto life and godliness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every dimension in the body needed for your life that you have ignored. Either through pride or ignorance. I pray for you. May your spirit be open to receive those dimensions. May your spirit be open to receive those dimensions. In the name of Jesus. And finally, I pray for you. 
for those who are overdue for a retreat grace to run for a retreat quick receive it in the name of Jesus especially for my dear men and women of God brothers and sisters in the vineyard you are a man of God here and you know you sense you know in your spirit that I am overdue for a retreat please I supply grace for you tonight if you need some resources to put a place together to spend time with God may God release those resources in the name of Jesus Christ for anyone here who has a problem with genuine fasting and prayer on a consistent basis I pray for you that limitation let it die now in Jesus name. for those who love pleasure more than God you love God but you love your flesh more than him you would throw God a thousand times to satisfy anything you want I pray for you tonight let that spiritual circumcision happen to you here let no sacrifice you have to go through to build your spiritual life be too much for you in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray finally whoever has laughed and mocked the God you serve I declare that by the evident hand of God upon your life you will bring every every speakings ill speakings of men to judgment in the name of Jesus Christ maybe I should add this one prayer if there is anybody in this place whose life is not producing results the results you know befits one who knows God I pray for you whatever needs to shift over your heavens to make you step into a level of provable results may it happen to you tonight in the name of Jesus you've never met Jesus I want to invite you now apostles sincerely under God I stand and I lie not I have not encountered Jesus you are in the main auditorium please keep standing overflow one overflow two overflow three and you are saying apostle this message tonight was for me I need to rush to God I've given my life to God but things have happened around my life that calls for a rededication if you are in any of these groups please our time is gone overflow three you can walk to your projector stand but overflow one two by the roadside and inside you belong to any of these categories please boldly make your way to the front i would like to pray with you it will be my joy to pray with you god bless you keep coming koinonia appreciate them as they are coming you can't hear a message like tonight and sit down as if it doesn't matter you can't hear a message like the one you have heard tonight and sit down as if it doesn't matter God bless you don't mind who is looking at you just make your way and come young and old it's never too late to know Jesus and it's never too late to be serious with him apostle how about me I've been around the things of God but I'm not exactly sure please join them join them I'm not sure if I'm born again or not I don't do any bad thing I'm aware of but I'm not born again join them join them quickly Koinonia are you still clapping God is bringing them it matters that people turn to righteousness it matters that people love Jesus with all their heart it matters that people seek him with all their heart it's not just the issue of evangelism people must the more we win souls the more God has bodies to manifest his glory God bless you hallelujah praise the Lord now thank you so much if you are joining them please come quickly join them those online if you are online from any nation you can connect as I pray thank you I salute you for your courage to come here some of you have given your life to Christ before. Some of you are making a renewed decision. It doesn't matter. No one condemns you. I love you with all my heart. We love you as a family of faith. I want you to lift your right hand and pray this prayer passionately. Let it be from your heart and let it be genuine. Those online and overflow three, please join us in this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, 
Say it again, Lord Jesus. I love you. Tonight, I have heard your word. I need you desperately in my life. I confess that I cannot help myself. And I ask Jesus to come into my life. Jesus, my life is yours. And I receive your life in return. The grace to walk in victory, I receive right now in Jesus' name. I declare that I'm saved. I'm a child of God. From today, a new journey starts in my life and my destiny. Please keep your hands lifted. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for these precious men and women, those outside and those who are making these decisions and those who will be making these decisions many weeks, months and years even after now. I decree and declare that the keeping grace will keep you. In the name of Jesus, I declare your sins forgiven and I declare that you start a new journey by the power of the Holy Spirit. I plant in you hunger and passion for God, for his glory, for his life and for your destiny. I declare that the Lord takes away from your life every kind of distraction and he will cause you to know him and love him and out of you will come mighty men and women of God. In the name of Jesus. I bless you with all my heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you so much. Please follow the lady. There's a lady waving her hands there. All of you, just follow her. The overflow three. There should be someone waving hands at your back. Please follow them. There will be a group of people to receive you and just talk with you very briefly. Let's honor them, Koinonia. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise, I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin.